How do you pass up the opportunity to spit blood in Joan Baez's face? Face, face, face. <laughs> Let's round up the faceless and get some pajamas. Dude, I didn't know my head was a bank. That's fucking awesome. I want to eat so many Tootsie Rolls, I just shit a tire. I jerked off at this towel so much, it might be a surfboard. Mr. Schmidt is an entertainer, not a cool. Hey, what's happening, Mike Schmidt, 40-year-old boy podcast. Now, I have a message out there for all Americans. All the Americans who are listening. Now, look, if you're a Canadian and you're listening, you can listen to this message as well. English people, do not take out your earbuds. Please leave your earpod vaginas plugged in. If you're in Brazil, if you're an Estonian, is that a, is that a country? Is that a, That's like a person who works on your face, right? Isn't that a skin expert? Uh, no, that's an esthetician. Hi, <laughs> I'm the oldest man alive. My brain works in, and my brain is mush. It doesn't even work. It's My brain is fucking mush. I heard est and I said Estonians. And because here's what I said, I said Estonians and I thought of Est and then I thought of Burt Reynolds pissing into a uh, into a can that was tied to his leg. And I think it was semi tough as Jill Clayberg tried to get him to listen to Est or learn Est or whatever the fuck it was. Uh, and then I thought of estheticians. That's where my brain went. And now maybe, you know what? Now that I think about it, it's not that my brain is mush. My brain just uh, it just ping ponged all over the goddamn place. There were too many possibilities. If your brain is mush, it sticks with just one thing. But the fact that I had three different possibilities there for Estonians, estheticians, and asked with Burt Reynolds fucking letting it go into a goddamn f- ankle flask. He had a tube and a catheter. Dude, I can't even imagine a catheter. I've had a catheter, right? I think I think I have because I've had surgery, but I didn't have like a sore cock afterwards because, I mean, I guess maybe it wasn't in there for very long just for the surgery itself. Uh, and also, I got to be honest with you, I'm not exactly remembering a whole lot about sore cocks. I mean, I've had sore cock before from, uh, you know, from in- overactivity, certainly. Uh, when I was a kid setting records. Uh, and then as I got older, you know, you wind up fucking three, four times in a day and maybe that you get a little chafing and that happens. But also when I got a, uh, I wound up getting an, uh, you, you, you want to talk about your est? How about an est TD? How about that? When I had that a million years ago for my black history month story, go ahead and buy year two. Uh, and don't buy year two. Oh, I'm having a Black Friday sale. Anybody who donates, how weird would that be? Uh, did I even get to the message yet? I don't know if I did talking about Americans. Maybe I'll, I'll bring it now. Uh, here's the message. Did I, I now I'm, because my brain is fried. I don't even know if I brought the message. I said Americans could listen and then everybody else. And then we got spun off in a fucking Estonia. You Estonians, you estheticians, you esters, uh, you, are you on esters? <laughs> Go, do me a favor on Esther. For, actually, on Esther's coming over here right now today, uh, Thanksgiving Day. She's going to make gorilla cookies by smashing her face into the dough. Uh, and then she might give me one right across my lip, which I would not enjoy. I can tell you that. Uh, you got to take an ass whooping from Lawanda Page. She's a legend. If, if Lawanda Page shows up in full on Ann Esther costume, first of all, she's been dead for like 11 years. So if she shows up in full Ann Esther costume, uh, hide your jugular vein because she's there for delicious brains and blood. Not gorilla cookies. I can tell you this. If the zombie Lawanda Page shows up at your house right now dressed like Aunt Esther, she is not there to make gorilla cookies and make nice with you. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. She's there to take a chunk out of you, pal. She's there to take you down to hell world with her. Uh, and out here, I know what? No true words have ever been spoken than this. If the zombie Lawanda Page shows up at your door right now in an Aunt Esther costume. This is truly the big one, Elizabeth. I, you cannot. There's no faking. You're not trying to get sympathy at that point. If the zombie Lawanda Page shows up in her Aunt Esther outfit at your door, this is the big one, Elizabeth. And you're going down, man. You're going to get chomped. And then Demond Wilson will be on the only love boat that ever had violence. Yes, I know this. It's funny. Terry Gar, I've talked about this many times. My brain is strange and it has like facts that are lurking in the, in the cracks. Just like you do. You've got things that you know about. There's people out there who listen to the show who are experts in certain things and beating or whatever the fuck or sewing or I don't know why I'm going to crafts because those are the only things I don't know, perhaps. No, if you're a cook, like if you're a cook, you know what certain spices make stuff taste good. I don't know what the fuck. Why am I trying to find specific things that you're good at? You're all good at everything except me. My brain just holds like dumb facts. My brain, you know, your brain looks like a walnut, like the outside shell of a walnut. If you peer in there, if you get a little like a, a like a little modeling clay and you chip away, you know, I'm sorry, the, I, you know, I'm thinking of the, the the tool that you use. Like, you know, when the dentist cleans out your plaque, that fucking thing, get a walnut and clean it out like you're cleaning out plaque. But that's like you cleaning up facts out of my tiny brain. Uh, Terry Gar once was on David Letterman and she was talking about the curse of having a brain like that. And she said, I can't remember. I, and I, I'm paraphrasing, but she was something like, I can't remember my home address, but I know that Char- uh, that Charo was married to Xavier Cugat and I can't 
can't explain it. And uh, and Letterman, of course, laughed uproariously because he loved Terry Garr, as we all did as a nation. I think if I, I can speak to this. They've tried to shove America's sweethearts down our throat for years and years. There was a Jennifer Aniston on Friends. There was a, a Courtney Cox on Friends. There was a Lisa Kudrow on Friends. And I think the list stops there. However, if you look at Terry Garr, you can think to yourself, there's no one in the world who doesn't like Terry Garr. Nobody dislikes Terry Garr. Whether it's Mr. Mom, whether it's her, her stuff on Letterman, whether it's Young Frankenstein, Terry Garr is a delight. Terry Garr is your, you know what she is? She's Bonnie Hunt version 1.0. And then Bonnie Hunt comes along and she does all the stuff that Terry Garr did. And everybody's like, wow, Bonnie Hunt's awesome as well. Because she is. Because she's funny and smart and interesting. And again, it's no, it's no surprise that Letterman loved Bonnie Hunt almost as much as he loved Terry Garr. Uh, but I'm, but still at the same time, and look, I would love them both. You know, I'll tell you, there's all these people like bringing out podcasts, people like uh, Never Not Funny had Rob Reiner on. And I see these people like they had Paula Poundstone on other like Earwolf shows. Dudes, uh, well, is Terry Garr still alive? Doesn't wait. She got the mumps, right? Didn't she get or she got that fucking weird disease? Did she have Mick Mars disease where her whole skeleton fused together and they got to wheel her around on a fucking dolly like Lecter? I don't know. I feel bad now. I shouldn't have brought up Terry Garr because she's the best. And I don't want to think about her fucking just lying in a hospital bed, staring and crying. She could be dead, too, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I'll tell you what. If the zombie Terry Garr shows up at your door in her outfit from young Frankenstein. Nice talkers. <laughs> oh, thank you, doctor. Uh, if she shows up, then, you know, I'll tell you what, that's not the big one, Elizabeth. You gladly give yourself over to the to the beauty and the whimsy and the wonderful conversational skills, as well as the radiance of a zombie Terry Gar. I let her take me to, t- to zombie land. I don't give a fuck. That's someone I let bite me. And I, I don't give a fuck. Even if she's in a decrepit state after having been zombified, I still say, you know what? I still remember her for when she took a shower in Letterman's office. It was the, it was the cutest moment of all time. He kept trying to get her to take a shower and she was kind of like, I don't well, and then I shouldn't. And then maybe. And uh, and it was funny. She kept going, no, I'm not going to do it. And he's like, but you should take a shower. And, and it's it's so fun to see because it's such a a shy boy trying to get a lady to do something, a beautiful woman. And it's it's I, and look. And now in the problematic times of me, too, and you as well, I'm sure it probably would be frowned upon that he was trying to get her to take her clothes off in front of an office and room full of people, because this was this show that they did. Because, uh, again, David Letterman reinvented comedy, folks. He 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 brought irony. He brought sarcasm to the forefront. And he just he was just so goddamn good at it. He's the fucking best. And he did a show once. And it came on and he was upstairs in the office. They weren't on the studio. They weren't in the studio. They didn't have a studio audience. They were literally on the floor where they write the show. And he said, hey, man, it's just it's uh, it's too damn hot to do a regular show in New York City. So they stayed upstairs. They had the band on like little Casio tones. And then they brought the guests in and they would sit at, at David's desk. Uh, they showed where he would throw the pencils into the ceiling. It's what it's if you can find it. It's a fucking delight. And it, again, it's one of those things where he was so influenced by Steve Allen. So he's changing television on the fly. And he just and he wasn't beholden into things and look later on in his career certainly he was because you you age things change maybe you're not uh you're you're not prepared to lean into the wind so much when you're getting older you're just like all right well the wind's gonna wind's gonna carry me around and i'm gonna make that happen and and maybe you rest on your laurels a little bit that's fine i will we i'll be willing to hear your argument for that however for the first 25 years of his career on television you cannot argue with me he was such an innovator and 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 even though you'll say hey he was aping steve allen yes but he picked up the torch and he took it so much further So they were upstairs and he said, it's just, it's just too damn hot to do a regular show here in New York city. So we're doing the show upstairs and he has Terry Gar as his guest, because of course she's a genius, a talk show genius who can adapt to anything. You know, when you would watch Carson and who would bring out Rodney Dangerfield, or he'd bring out these dudes. He could just, you know, that he could talk to George Goble, you know, funny dudes who just didn't let anything fucking bother them. Well, Terry Gar was unflappable. Even though her secret was she looked entirely flappable. You knew she was in control of it, even if she wasn't. And you knew that she was going to go uh, like let him lo- would always say stuff like you know, they're, they're the best in the business because you can trust Terry Gar's money in the bank. That's what that was. Letterman always to say that about good guests. They're just, you know, they're just money in the bank. Terry Gar was money in the bank. You could have her down in the studio in front of 500 people or you could have her upstairs with Letterman wearing a fucking T-shirt and throwing pencils into the ceiling. And she's going to be just as funny and deliver all of the bacon just as quickly and as and as efficiently as you would expect her to. She's money in the bank. So she sits down at the desk because if they're doing an, an unnatural show, you've got to have guests who can adapt. And he knows she can. And their chemistry so good that she sits with him and he, uh, he, he's trying to get her to take a shower and she keeps, uh, she keeps just blowing it off, but in a very, in a great way. Like she challenged him also. That was another thing. She wasn't just some cutesy, like demure, he, 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 like she'd bust his balls right back and he'd laugh. 
But my favorite part of the interview is they're, you know, he asks about the shower. They talk a little bit about that and then they don't, they, they stop talking about it and they're talking about some movie or some project or something going on. And about five minutes goes by and then he goes, please take a shower. <laughs> It's so great. And she's just like, no, but, but the fact he's waiting the whole time, they're talking about something completely different. It's way in the past. And he just goes, please take a shower. It's hysterical because then the best part is they do the whole show. They have a music, you know, they do the band and they have other guests and they do a, yeah, sketches and they do lists. And, and then at the end of the show, they, uh, she's, she takes the shower. I, I, I hate to be the spoiler alert guy, but she, uh, she literally, she's in the bathroom and, and he, he goes, we got to get a camera in there. And she gets into the shower and, and you hear the shower running and he's just like, yeah, he's so happy. And the last thing you hear is she goes, I hate you. She totally, <laughs> totally yells it from inside the shower. And, uh, but it's, but it's fucking solid TV. You know what it is? It's money in the bank. God damn it. And it's, it's just beautiful to see. So so if the zombie Terry guard does happen to on this Thanksgiving day, wander up to your doorbell and uh, and lean into it with one of her tremendous knockers. Thank you, doctor. Uh, go with her. Let her bite you. Let her take you off to zombie land because you'll be delighted by whatever conversation you have with her on the way. And yes, certainly you're the undead now and you are pursuant of flesh and blood to stay alive. And and you're probably going to start falling apart and rotting while you're still on this earth. And that's fine. And your soul will not be at rest. But why would you want your soul to rest when the option is to spend eternity with Terry Gar biting people? Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? That's exactly what I would look forward to. If you told me that, if you're like, hey, man, there's heaven. 72 fucking virgins and a bunch of grapes and whatever the else fuck that they got up there or it's heaven. So you get up there and you're hanging out with fucking Jimi Hendrix and uh, and Kurt Cobain and then you're fucking banging the shit out of every hot girl who ever died and it's fucking fantastic. I, and I'd say, okay, what's my alternative? They go, well, uh, the zombie Terry Gar could take a chunk out of you and then the two of you would wander the earth together in pursuit of blood and flesh while also having dazzling conversation. I, I got news for you. I'm opting for the latter. I, I There's one less space in heaven that's occupied because I will be down on the earth, walking to and fro, talking to Terry Gar about Xavier Cugat and fucking Charo. That's what would happen. Um, so I don't, I don't know how we spun into that, however. But, but still, uh, the point is Happy Thanksgiving. I don't know if I've received or delivered that message to you. I will say it again. Happy Thanksgiving to you people in America and in Canada and Australia and all around the world, if you're listening there. Uh, to all of our, uh, our servicemen who are listening on United Armed Forces Radio, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving. What if there were? What if that? All those dudes down at the border, they got 15,000 troops or whatever the fuck down there. They're spending $8 billion to have those guys fight a bunch of people who don't wear shoes. I'm glad they're down there protecting the southern border. You know, those people in Arizona are like, oh my gosh, thank God you're stopping that fourth grade class and their parents from coming over the fence. Who knows what could happen? I'm glad you're down here with your fucking AR-15, AR-15s so you can ventilate anybody who comes along who doesn't own a belt. What the fuck? Uh, but they're down there. They're listening to me right now. I can tell you they are. Uh, that's because that's usually what happens with the troops. They say, uh, well, let's find something to distract ourselves. And we go, well, what about the 40 year old boy podcast? And then, uh, well, all right, look, I'm going to be truthful. The, uh, the troops don't listen to me by choice. Uh, they are blaring this show out of the speakers to keep the caravan from crossing the border. They're like they're 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 coming with their families and they you know they all need dental work and socks and they haven't had showers in months and they're trying to share one bottle of water amongst 3000 people and yet and yet folks they approach the border and they hear me talking about the zombie Lawanda Page and they're hesitant. They pause. And they think to themselves, maybe this isn't where we should be going. Maybe this isn't the country that we need to be uh, asking for asylum and entering because they let this madman talk and have a goddamn show. I'm like, I'm just, you know what I am? I'm verbal Metallica. I'm not even the fucking hardcore, like loud ass music. I'm just me talking. And they hear me doing like circuitous bullshit and talking in circles. And then I'm confusing the caravan. That's it. I'm like, cause they get, I unleash the bees on these motherfuckers and they just fucking spin around and they're like, Jesus, I've totally forgotten about the fact that I haven't blown my nose in four months because I had to walk here through fucking Honduras. And then they get confused. That's what the troops want to do, man. I'm, I'm part of the psyops. I'm part of the sonic warfare that they're using against the caravan. And I'm not happy about it. I didn't sign off on this shit. I'm like the Rolling Stones when we're fucking Trump plays, give me shelter. And they're like, Hey, don't do that. And Trump's just like, a lot of people are saying I should. Many people are saying that I should continue to play the song. Just it's the wild west now, folks. Anybody can do whatever the fuck they want. They can play songs. They can ignore copyright. I follow a fucking Twitter account called for exposure. And what they have is they have, they, uh, uh, they, they print incidents of people 
stealing people's artwork from deviant art or Twitter or from Instagram or whatever the fuck and using it for their own their own merch or flyers and then the artist writes them and says hey man that's mine and the and the argument is hey man you should have known that anybody could use it once you put it on the internet and uh holy fuck fuck you Sean Fanning this is all your goddamn fault did you ever in your life think to yourself man Ah, I got to apologize to Lars Ulrich. I mean, because seriously, that fucking now that we're we're seeming really Metallica heavy in this episode. But but man, do you got to step up and apologize to Lars Ulrich and Metallica because they were there. They said, man, streaming is going to fuck us. The the piracy and and Napster is going to fuck us and fuck everybody really in the long run. And uh, and everybody went, oh, fuck you, man. I like my free music. And hey, look, man, I've downloaded free music. I'm not going to fucking lie to you. I've I've watched live streams of fucking free sports and not paid for it. Absolutely. I'm not I'm not saying I'm fucking clean. Um, and I'm sure you're going to say, well, then as an artist, you can't complain when somebody when fucking pilfers your work. And I mean, no, fuck you. I'll complain anyway. I mean, that's fine. But I mean, I put the shit out for free anyway. So it's not like anybody's pilfering it, quite frankly, unless somebody starts stealing from the Patreon and whatever the fuck. But man, if you're if you're an artist and you're putting your stuff out on your site and then somebody just fucking comes along and ganks it. And then you go to them and go, hey, man, cease and desist. That's mine. And they're like, ah, <laughs> LOL, man, whatever you triggered, you triggered, bro. Yeah, I'm triggered. I fucking painted that. That's my hard work. And then it's that same thing where and another thing that they have is they'll people writing correspondence to artists and like, hey, man, I need you to create uh, a digital world for me with 21 characters, almost like World of Warcraft. But it would be a bunch of characters and I'll give you the names. and Then you can just kind of come up with the worlds and everything else on your own. And the person's like, all right, well, I mean, you know, here's my rate for that. It's I mean, that's you're looking at probably five weeks of work at, at 1500 a week. And the guy goes, whoa, 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 whoa. what are you talking about? I, I I don't have any money to pay you. And then the artist is like, well, then why the fuck are you thinking you're going to hire me? And he goes, hey, man, you put free artwork on your website all the time. He goes, yeah, to advertise my work. That's what you got you in the door. And he goes, oh, I just thought it was for all of us. You know, you just wanted people to hire you to work. I mean, there's no reason you should get paid. He's like, and the guy's like, what do you mean? Why shouldn't I get paid? I'm an artist. And he goes, fuck you, man. Get a real job. You know, you want to think you want to fucking paint cartoons and get a job. Uh, but in reality, you know, again, that person just offered they wanted 21 different characters in an entire world created by that artist. What do they think the fucking person's going to do? Just just go yes and and how do they think they eat? But unfortunately, everybody thinks art and commerce are separate. Uh, and they should be to certain extents, but at the same time, they shouldn't be because you know what? If someone's an artist, they should be paid for their work. That's how I feel about it, folks. How do you feel? Let's go to the phones. <laughs> Line one. Lawanda, what do you got to say? You heard me. That was my Lawanda Page impression, and I'm going to be honest with you, I should probably edit it out because it was not good, uh, but it was enough to scare away whoever was at my doorstep. I don't know if anybody was really at my doorstep. Um, so happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I am pleased and proud for you to be uh, tuning me in on a holiday. Maybe you're not. And I will tell you this. I wasn't sure. Well, I mean, I knew I was doing a show, obviously, but then uh, Gio was, he, he was talking to me the other day and he's like, Hey man, you got to do a show. And I said, well, of course I'm doing a show. I don't, I'm recording until tomorrow or whatever. And this was Monday. I thought I was recording Tuesday and then I did not because I had to drive yesterday. And then uh, he's like, well, no, you got to do a show because there's a lot of lonely people on Thanksgiving and they like to spend it with you. And I don't, uh, I don't think that that's, I mean, maybe that's true. I don't know if it's true the way he phrased it, but, but I get it. You know, there are a lot of people out there who don't, who might not have families or friends to gather with. I will tell you about one of them right now. Hi, that's me. Uh, I'm home. I mean, well, I mean, uh, well, actually, because because today got away from me and I'll tell you why in a minute. I might have to drive a little bit tomorrow just to hit a bonus if I don't get out tonight and go ahead and drive late. I think I'm going to try because I do not want to fucking drive tomorrow. I want to get up. I'd like to watch the bears in the morning and then just kind of fucking chill in the afternoon and hang out. I might do a lot of social media stuff. Who knows what I'll do, folks? I just want a day off because God knows I haven't had enough of those in the past 10 days. Uh, (laughs) I want some me time, man. You know what I need? I need some me time to get away from me. I've been with me for 10 days. I need a day from uh, tomorrow. Oh, I know I'm going to see Bohemian Rhapsody tomorrow. I know that. I will be going to see a movie. I will be going out of the house to see a film. Film. Because I need to see that film. Because I want to see that on the big screen. A lot of people have told me. They're like, hey, man, uh, it's very much, uh, it's a really good, cool movie. And it's a lot of fun. And I said, great. And then other people are like, hey, man, it's like a VH1 biopic and you shouldn't fucking see it. And I'm like, eh. I mean, from the first trailer, I wanted to see it. And I wanted to see it on the big screen. It just seems like one of those movies, if you watch it in your house, you might as well just listen to fucking Queen CDs, right? I mean, you should just go ahead and see that thing loud and fucking proud. And and, uh, and with McLeod, maybe Dennis Weaver comes and sees it for you. He rides a horse. You two of you get off. You de-saddle. You walk in there and you check out that movie. And then you compare mustaches. You, you compare Dennis Weaver's mustache with Freddie Mercury's mustache. That's a Mercury McLeod battle. How's that work out? Mercury versus McLeod mustache. Mercury McLeod at 3M. That's right. We go 3M. We go Mercury McLeod mustache battle. The 3MB. 
Uh, 3MB, isn't that from a show? No, I'm thinking of CMB, the Cash Money Brothers. <laughs> That's right. And they fucking, they fucked up some, some scungeely eating motherfuckers. As fucking Nino Brown will cut off your fucking ponytail, motherfucker. That's how it works. Uh, that's a Christmas movie, right? That's a Thanksgiving movie because Chris Rock comes along and they're giving away turkeys and he steals one and then he runs away and he tries to sell the turkey for $5 because he's a junkie in that movie with crazy white lips and it's horrible. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, wait, wait, so we were talking about uh, of the day. Oh, so I'm going to have to drive tomorrow a little bit and I don't want to. I would prefer to be off. Uh, but uh Fuck, now I've lost. How did the fuck did I lose where I was? It was I, I, I said happy Thanksgiving and then I spun off and I talk, uh, talked about, oh, Gio, ah. He said there are lonely people who want to hear you on Thanksgiving, and I and I good for him. And I'm so I'm I'm alone myself. I don't. So I'm look. I here's the thing. I'm spending the whole day with me. I don't know about you guys, but I'm certainly spending the entire Thanksgiving day with me. Um, I I today. Uh, I was supposed to, I was going to drive today and try to catch my bonus, so I was for sure not being able to do anything yesterday. And also, I went out today because I had. I got away from my apartment because I went to the gym early, but then also I had some, uh, I, I, I was going to record earlier today. I was going to, well, fuck, I was going to record yesterday, Tuesday, but I had to drive and then I was going to record today. But then uh, because it's the holiday, I don't know if it's because of uh, the, uh, the time off or family gatherings or holiday. I, I don't fucking know. But my neighbors on either side of me, and that would, of course, would be uh, I'm going to call I'm going to call one of them uh, Lou, the racist bartender, and I'm going to call Bedsheet Bob. That's who's on the other apartment. Why do I call him Bedsheet Bob? Well, because he has a gigantic white I, I, from from what I've seen. I've only been able to peek in a window occasionally because they keep their blinds closed. And it, if, honestly, far too often for me. And you open those fucking blinds. I need to see what's in your house. Uh, no, I've I've peeked as you walk by. You know, you look at somebody's house. And they have a gigantic, like a, it looks like a drop cloth on their wall. And that's where they play video games or they watch soccer or they watch, they watch TV. They don't have a, it doesn't look like they have a television. It looks like they have a fucking projection screen. And, uh, and so I'll call them bedsheet Bob. So I got bedsheet Bob next door. I got racist Lou and, uh, and they are home. They are not working because of the holiday or whatever the fuck. And they, uh, have decided that the two of them need to have their televisions at maximum ear bleeding volume. They, they have just cranked it the fuck up. They, they have gone crazy with it. Uh, and, and so I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but I, I certainly can hear it. And the, again, like I said, the best part is one of them is watching like explosion movies and one of them is watching Fox news, uh, because, because that's what you want to tune into for the holiday, right? Don't you want to, don't you want to get in, in tight with Trump pardoning turkeys and whatever the fuck else they're going to scare you with this fucking couple of days. Um, I need to hear more about that fucking block of wood they've hired to be the new attorney general. They haven't even really hired him. They just said the, they said it. They didn't even appoint him. They just said, yeah, he's the guy. He's the acting AG. And nobody fucking approved it. They didn't even fucking throw it to the Senate. And Trump's just like, yeah, so what? And again, that's what I'm saying. Decorum is finished. And people just steal artwork. People just hire dudes and don't get, look for approval. Um, this week, like Trump is like, hey, man, I'm going to write my responses to uh, Robert Mueller. And they're like, all right, great. And, and, and what if Mueller subpoenas you? And Giuliani's like, yeah, we probably won't. Uh, we won't, won't cooperate. And uh, and what does that mean? I mean, like nobody ever follows up with like, well, then you'll probably go to jail. Is that OK for all of you? Do you don't you don't mind going to the fucking gray bar hotel with fucking Takachi six nine and the rest of these other motherfuckers who dumb, dumb things and wind up in fucking jail? Do dumb things, not dumb, dumb things. They dumb, dumb things. Yeah. You know what you do? You dumb, dumb things. You wind up in jail. That's how it works. Uh, Takashi 69 is in jail folks. I don't know if you've heard this. It's a terrible Thanksgiving. It's, it's, uh, it's, I, I was going to say it was a Christmas miracle that he made it to Christmas, but instead they pinched him around Thanksgiving and the man's in fucking gen pop in Brooklyn. Uh, and then of course the most people are like, ha ha, he's going to get raped. Cause that's funny. God knows that's really funny in this country. All right. I got to shut up. Fuck. What am I doing? I spin it off. I was I, it's a holiday. Nobody wants to hear me bitch and moan about that kind of stuff. Even though I'm not really bitching and moaning, I'm commentating. That's what I'm doing. I'm giving, I'm giving you a commentary and I'm also doing whatever I can to speak as quickly as I can. And as loudly as I can to drown out fucking explosions on one side of me, cannons to the left of me, propaganda to the right of me. I don't know what's happening. All right. Um, but, but so I'm alone, man. I'm here on Thanksgiving by myself. I don't know. Like I have some brisket. I might cook that up. I've, I've got some turkey. I think, but not like. Uh, here's another thing. Get this, motherfuckers. Uh, I I thought about cooking myself a turkey with stuffing and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, all right, man. You know what? Because I like I love the the leftovers. That's the best part, dude. When you get the fucking Thanksgiving leftovers, when you make a fucking turkey sandwich on like white bread with salt and mayo. Oh my god, is that white trash delicious? It's so fucking fantastic. Love it. Huge fan. 
and uh, and some stuffing. You, want to, you know, people put stuffing on their sandwiches. Not me, man. I like stuffing on the side in a bowl with some leftover gravy and then the sandwich itself. I go, I separate the two. And I'm not one of those fucking idiots who's like, my food can't touch. I don't give a fuck. I'll make a Dagwood sandwich out of anything. But I just, I like the stuffing separate from the turkey sandwich. Turkey sandwich is on its own, man. It's turkey. It's salt. It's mayo, and it's on like the softest white bread you can fucking find. And look, you can have it on a multi-grain. You can have it on a seven grain. You can have it on a 10 grain. Fuck, you can put it on a 12 grain if you want. Buy that fucking murder bread I told you about. Go ahead and throw it on there. But I like it on the softest white bread. And I'm not talking about a Wonder Bread or a Butternut. I'm, I'm talking about going to a bakery and having them slicing you a big old loaf of whatever the fuck they cooked up that day. Uh, you know, the kind of stuff that's so fresh it goes bad in a day. That's the thing. It's like, I, I wanted to get some pumpkin pie because you know me, you all know I love the dome, the Cool Whip dome where I bury some pie inside of it and you can't find the pie for like four days. You're just clawing through Cool Whip. Like, it's like the fucking pie is just stranded like miners in a Thai, Thailand well and you're just trying to dig through the fucking Cool Whip hoping to save them before the shit hits the fan, before they drown in that delicious fake dairy confection. Uh, and I'll put Cool Whip on anything, but mainly on pie. I got to be honest. And look, well, pie, look, pie and pussy. That's that's your top two Cool Whip choices. And then after that, you figure out where you go with it. I mean, maybe pork chops. I don't, it doesn't all have to start with pee, but but, I, but my selection so far, Cool Whip, pie and pussy. I'm going to tell you, those are the two best things. And, and I don't know if Cool Whip wants to take that as a slogan. I'm sure they'll just take it because, again, like I said, it's the fucking Wild West. People will just steal it. Pie and pussy tastes better with Cool Whip. They, they Pay me, motherfuckers. Pay me Bird's Eye or General Mills or whatever one of the four food companies that exist who owns fucking Cool Whip. Uh... So I was going to buy turkey. Like I, I have some, here's the thing. I have brisket. I have ground turkey. Uh, so I was going to make a real turkey. Okay. As I've mentioned, and uh, I'm sorry, my brain's all over the goddamn place. I was going to make a real turkey. And uh, this week my oven doesn't work. Like I was seasoning my, my cast iron skillet and I turned my oven on to broil and it, it doesn't go any higher than like 200 degrees. It's, it's just, so I, I mean, I'd be cooking a turkey for about four fucking months if I went ahead and used that. So I didn't get to talk to my manager. Besides, even if I would have talked to her on Monday, I'm sure they wouldn't have had it fixed in time for me to do whatever. And I, I get a feeling they're going to have to replace this fucking oven. Again, I, this, this, everything's about to hit the same clock. Remember I told you, calm down, microwave, had to get a new fridge. This stove has been here since I got here, and it might have been here for the lady who lived before me, who I told you was also here for 30 fucking years. I mean, because this is an old school fucking oven. I mean, it, it's... Uh, it doesn't even say oven. It just says firebox. And does that mean anything to you? <laughs> That'll tell you how old this fucking thing is. Uh, so I, I was going to cook a turkey. Like I thought about you know making one because I, I, I man, I, I cooked a turkey a couple of years ago. Uh, um, eh, I don't want to get into that, but I, but, but I loved it and I, I, I really enjoyed it. I had a great time. But again, also that was with other people. It was a, it was a, a thing where you shared it with others. You know, if you, if you do it for yourself, man, eh, you know, you can be kind to yourself and that's fine. But at the same time, when you're making a fucking turkey, you're just like, you're, you would prefer to share it with other people. Uh, but I still would have done it. I thought about making at least a turkey breast. Cause then, like I said, I could have the fucking leftovers and stuff, but instead I have some ground turkey that was in the freezer and I pulled that out. I got some brisket. I got some cauliflower rice. I've got, uh, you know, I, I think I'm going to make some, uh, I might make some box mac and cheese, which sounds terrible, but I love craft mac and cheese in a white trash way. I mean, this is just, this is just the total, I'm going to have to buy jarred gravy. Oh my God. I'm making this sound fucking sad as hell alone with jarred gravy. Hey, can you, can you think of another phrase that says anything worse about your Thanksgiving alone with jarred gravy that, uh, oh, and what's happening here? Yes, you're damn right. It is. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I, but it's not that bad. I, I'm not. I'm not upset. I'm not sad. I don't want to make it sound like that where I'm like, boo hoo lonely. I mean, would I love to be with other people? I would. It would be fantastic. Um, but but it's just not going to work out that way. It's not. I mean, I'll go to the movie. I'll probably cook up tomorrow. Like I said, I'll watch the football game. I, I hope I don't have to drive tomorrow. Hopefully I can get that bonus tonight. Get seven people in the car to and fro. Um, one of the reasons I waited till I waited until late last night to drive and I did not drive today is, again, like I've mentioned other reasons, but also... Uh, I don't want to go to the airport. I got stuck going to the airport twice yesterday. It took me, there was one guy and it was, a, it was a 16 or 17 mile trip. It took an hour and 40 minutes. And, you, and that sounds bad, right? But, uh, the last mile and a half to get into the airport was 38 minutes. And then it took me 24 minutes to get out of the airport. So that's 52 minutes of the trip just in taillights, trying to get in and out of the airport to go three and a half miles. Uh, 
Uh, it was, it was nightmarish and I didn't want to do it. And then of course I leave that guy and I put some taillights behind me and I get away from the airport and the next guy I get pinged, he's going to the airport. And I, that's the one beef I have with, you know, with Uber, you don't know where they're going till they get in the fucking car until you pull up and you see their suitcase. And normally, yeah, I guess you want to go to the airport to make money, but holy fuck, not, not, it's just not worth it. I don't, you know, again, that the guy, the hour and 40 minute thing, it was a 35, mile, $35 ride because he tipped a couple of bucks on top of it. So it was 33 bucks. Uh, he wanted probably paying like 58, but I mean, still it, it was just, it's, it's not worth it, man. It's not because it, again, you're trying, especially if you're trying to get the bonus, man, you're trying to stack rides and nobody in whatever the fuck, it's a lot of Uber lingo you don't care about. Um, so I, I, uh, I, I don't want to drive tomorrow, but I'm, I'm okay with tomorrow. I'm okay with being alone and cooking up and, and like I said, watching football and going to a movie and stuff. I've, that's kind of what it's uh, become. Would I prefer to do other things? Would I prefer to have been, uh, you know, to be with other people or friends or family or whatever? Of course. I mean, we all would because I've, as you know, uh, Thanksgiving has, has meaning to me. It has, it has special meaning. It's something uh, I've loved. It's probably my favorite holiday uh, when you can be with people like, you know, um, Karen and I, we, we had a, a Thanksgiving here once and, and a Friendsgiving type of thing. And people came over and we played the, you know, some people came over afterwards for pie and, and dessert. Some people came over for actual dinner. And, uh, and, and, you know, I, when you got 15 people in your apartment and you're all playing celebrity or you're shouting out clues and you're, and you're just, man, is that fun? It was so fun. And you just, you miss that. I miss that. I miss camaraderie. I miss being with people. I miss hanging out. And the funny thing is like, even even the people I know, like I said, they all have their families. They all have their stuff. There's no, there's, I'm not part of a friends giving group, which is again, fine. I'm not saying it in a boohoo way. I'm just saying that that's just the way it is. And also friends giving is a, this will sound weird. It's a young person's game because by my age, a lot of people are already uh, with kids and with families and they have obligations on either side of the family uh, or they just want to be with their kids. You know what I mean? And I've been very lucky, you know, where Pat invited me in once one Thanksgiving a few years ago and I was able to go there. Uh, I spent a great Thanksgiving with Jimmy and Danielle and their and Danielle's family at her house. That was where uh, chestnut soup. I've never heard of such a thing by Marsha Hunt uh, was born. If you know that from Never Not Funny um, that was born at that at that Thanksgiving and it was fantastic. Um I, I, I love Thanksgiving. I love family. I love friends. I don't mind. I'll be alone today, which is Thanksgiving day. But I mean, I'm, I'm getting used to that. Do I like it? Yeah, I can make it work. Would I prefer to be doing other things with other people? Of course. But, uh, and I'm sure some of you would too. So when Gio said that to me, he's like, Hey man, a lot of people are alone and they want it. They want you to reach out. They want you to be alone. Cause I actually thought about doing a stream on Thanksgiving. Uh, my buddy Chuck was like, you should cook. Like you should actually cook and have people pay attention. And I said, ah, I'd love to. Uh, however, my oven doesn't work. Hi, <laughs> how you doing alone with a broken oven and jarless gravy. The live stream of Mike Schmidt on Thanksgiving, 2018. Um, I, I, and I, I know I'm making it sound silly or bad or whatever the fuck, but it's not, it's, it's truly not. And I'm not saying that in a convince myself way. No, it's really great. I like burn Turkey and football. I mean, I, you know, that's bullshit. I'm not doing that. I'm not the fucking SpongeBob meme bent over with the fucking all caps and some caps. Uh, I'm being genuine. Do I wish I had other plans? Do I, do I wish I was spending the day with family or friends or people who love you? Yeah, I do. Uh, but I mean, I was alone last year. You know, in 2017, I was by myself. I think I actually drove uh, during during the day or maybe even a lot of the day last year. Um, I, I was, you know, that's just that's just the way it worked out. And I, I, 2016 was different. That was uh, that was the last that was a great Thanksgiving. Um, I, I wound up at Jill's place. You know, it's funny because I had, uh, I had, <laughs> we had split up for the millionth time in Denver in September. And I was like, that's it. I'm walking away. I can't do this. We're done. I'm not, you know, all this bullshit. I walked away and, and, uh, oh, it wasn't bullshit. It was just, I, I had to. And, uh, and then that lasted two months. And then I was sitting in my house and I was sick. And, and you know, this, I did the show where I was like, Hey, I've reached out to, again to Jill and I'm seeing her again because I was so wiped the fuck out. I couldn't, I, I was sick and, and you're never, more alone than you are when you have a 103 degree fever and you're sick and there's nobody, there's nobody there for you. There's nobody to, to put a compress on your head or to stroke your hair or to make you soup or to bring you orange juice or medicine or, or to even ask how you are. I think that's probably the hardest thing is if, if someone doesn't ask how you are, that's you can. And you know, when I hide in my apartment, I, I bring that upon myself because 
people don't check on you. People lose you. And and look, man, I'm not 75 fucking years old. I can go out. I can see people. I can do whatever the fuck. But your brain can trick you, you know, and, and I say this because some of you right now might be alone for this Thanksgiving, but you're not alone, man. You got social media. You got friends. Text me. Call me. Don't call me. <laughs> but still, um, I, I realize now that I, I, I was talking about this in a way that I thought was going to be uh, convincing. And uh, even though I am convinced, I'm not, I'm not trying to convince you of something, but what I, I guess um, I didn't want it to sound like, oh, boo-hoo, you guys are alone and I'm alone and boo-hoo. And I, I don't mean that. But in because in 2016, I went when I went to Jill's, you know, I reached out to her uh, on Halloween night, I think it was. It was game seven of the of the World Series. I, I told you I was sick and I'd been sick for days. And and I reached out and we, we wound up talking and then having an accord. We texted all night and then I wound up seeing her. And then she's like, will you come here for Thanksgiving? And I said, I'd love that. And I went there and we cooked, man. And, and that, that was, I, I mean, I made a turkey. You know, I made a couple of turkeys with her at her place, but I mean, this was, you know, I made a turkey at her house. I made uh, what I, what I, I have a recipe for fantastic meatballs with like pork shoulder and veal and, and, and beef. And, um, and we cooked for her and her kids and, and then they came over for dinner and, and it was family, man. It was that thing where, you know, you, you, this show is notorious for smells like Thursday. And that was in the beginning of the show. I did, I did a show and I, I was pissed cause I woke up and the house just the, like there was no cooking being done. Like I wanted to, wa- I wanted to wake up to family and great smells and, and food and camaraderie. And, and, uh, Karen had gone out for the day and I was alone and it just, it, it just smelled like Thursday and it drove me crazy. And I, I know how selfish that is and I know how selfish it sounds. And, and, but at the time, you know, I mean, the show is called the 40 year old boy. And I mean, even now, I mean, I, I can be selfish. We know this. Um, this is a lot of talking in circles, I bet. Um, but it, but it means a lot to me, you know, Thanksgiving. I just, I just, the, Warm house, warm smells, people you love, and and being able to be close to them. And and uh, uh, I, <laughs> I'm doing a disservice to those of you that are alone that are paying attention to this. I, I hope I'm not leaving you in a lurch or making you sad. I don't mean to do that. I, I mean to say that you can overcome and get over that. You know, even though I, like I said, when I was at Jill's, we cooked and then, you know, you go to the couch, man, and you just, then, you know, someone's head is on your shoulder and, and it's warm and, uh, you know, you're watching football or you're just hanging out, whatever you're doing, even in the silence, even the, even to hear somebody sigh contentedly close to your ear, that's very hard to replace. And, uh, and you find yourself thinking about it later. And even in, in, as days go by and weeks and months and years, and, and then eventually, uh, you know, you die. No, I'm I'm teasing. (laughs) Um, those are things that you miss. And those are things that are never far from my mind. You know, that, that, uh, uh, you know, I could always count on waking up and seeing Karen and knowing that th- things were going to be, you know, we were going to have a family Thanksgiving. That was going to be, uh, great. You know, I've, I've always, I've learned a lot about myself with, uh, in therapy in the past five years, I've learned that I'm, I'm constantly in pursuit of a childhood ideal that I did not have. I may have had it, uh, piecemeal, but I never had it. You know, I, I, that, you want to talk about the whole fucking Norman Rockwell and the perfect existence. And look, nobody's had that fucking thing. But, you know, I had a, a one parent household and my mom was busy all the time. And so I was kind of alone and raised myself. And maybe that, you know, I didn't feel as loved as I should have. And maybe that's why I constantly seek it out now. Who knows, man? I'm learning. Like I said, I've been pretty self-aware my whole life. But then to peel the onion even more and go down and find out a little bit more about who you are and why. That's weird. It's uh, it's it's revealing. And it makes you happy because you go, oh, okay, there is a reason for this. Uh, but what you have to do is you have to care enough about yourself and you have to love yourself to to make it work for you as you get older, to try to fill in the gaps you've always had. And that's a struggle. And I don't know if it's a struggle for you guys. I know it's one for me. So uh, I'm alone this Thanksgiving, and and that's uh, but that's fine. That's That's not always going to be the case. And I have, I have memories and photos and I have thoughts and I have feelings and, and I'll cook, you know, and so my house will smell like it's, it's full of joy and love instead of just being full of me and hope and, and wonderment and wondering what's going to come because that's where we're at, man. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know, you know, I I'm, I'm on a, we're all on a bit of a treadmill. We're all just kind of moving forward, but also at the same time, we might be staying in the same place. 
uh, it's when you hop out and you really start kind of moving forward that, that things progress. And, and look, man, I've done these shows over the years where I've told you, we got to go, we got to move this. We got the Schmitty's fit brigade and we got to move forward together as a group. And, and that's nice because that's also me looking for a, a common experience with people and, uh, and looking for the family feeling I may not have ever had. And I understand that it lurks in my brain all the time. You know, when I, when I did that Thanksgiving at Jill's, I can still, I can still see it. I remember it. I remember waking up that morning and, you know, I had to cook the turkey. So I wanted to, I didn't have to, I wanted to, I wanted to cook everything. I wanted to see her face. I wanted to see the kids faces when they, they ate amazing food that we created. And then, uh, you know, afterwards when we hung out and we say, you know, it just, it's just, it's a feeling like no other to, to be embraced and loved. And we all know this, uh, but I say to you, if you are alone today on this Thanksgiving, like me, um, accept my long distance embrace. Know that you are loved. Know that you are appreciated. Know that you are really the family I've I've been looking for. It's just that you're scattered to the winds and you're far away, and and uh, and you've allowed me to feel camaraderie. Me, you, you've allowed me to feel accepted and loved. And, and I, and so I want to thank, uh, everybody, you know, it's Thanksgiving. So I figure why not, why not tell you, you know, what we're thankful for. That's the thing everybody says, you know, well, what are you thankful for? What do you, what's going on and how do you feel and what's going And, and so, um, so you, you're going to have to indulge me and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about what I'm thankful for a little bit here. I'm, uh, I'm not only going to talk about what I'm thankful for, but I'm going to talk about who, and I've, I've done this in uh in a truncated version in in past thanksgiving shows but uh but today you know i'm gonna i'm gonna go along with it and we'll see what happens but um you know i'm i'm thankful that i'm able to do this show i'm thankful that for you know right now 10 plus years i've had people who care about the things that i say i've had people who support the things that i say i've had people who disagree with me and yet haven't left and I've had people who've agreed with me and told me over and over that I should be even more conviction, uh, convicted and, and strong in the things that I say. Um, but I think the greatest gift is the fact that all of you listen, obviously. I'm thankful for the fact that all of you will sit down and listen to me, whether you're hearing this on Thanksgiving 2018 or if you're listening to this in the fucking future in 2040. Who the fuck knows, man? And uh, well, I know you're thinking to yourself, Mike, why would you think your voice would live 22 years into the future? Well, I don't think YouTube's going anywhere. So I'm going to have a fucking <laughs> presence on there, whether I die, whether the 90-year-old boy finally dies, the 40-year-old boy channel will still exist. So I'm thankful for anybody who's ever put in an earbud and queued up my show and downloaded it and listened and laughed. I'm thankful for anybody out there. You guys know who you are. You all know. I'm thankful for anybody who's allowed me to have uh, some semblance of a career doing the thing that I think I'm best at. Even if I keep telling myself I'm not, even if I keep telling you that I'm not, even if I refuse to promote myself, even if I don't uh, do all the things you're supposed to do to draw attention to yourself and to make your life better. And, uh, and I hope I'm not taking for granted the fact that you guys will always be there, but it feels to me like you will. And that makes me very happy. And well, it's also a bad thought because it makes me kind of backslide. I'm like, well, I've got these people who love me and, and, and these guys are great. And they're very supportive. Well, I should reach beyond that. I should be finding more people. And that's the whole thing is we should be growing and you should be coming with me. And, and I recognize that. And this is the thing I've struggled with for years and years. And you've heard it on all sorts of shows in the past. Um, but I'm thankful that you've listened to me bitch and moan and whine and complain about myself not being more than I should be. And yet you've stayed to, to keep me as, uh, as big as I am, if that makes any sense. Um, even though I'm not big, but I mean, I, I, but the the fact, I mean, I will tell you this, whenever I tell anybody new that I have a podcast, you know, they get that eye roll going because there's fucking 8 billion podcasts. And then I always say I'm in year 11. Uh, because it's almost like a whiskey back. You know what I mean? You give them the beer and you're like, yeah, I got a podcast. And they have a sip. And then you go, yeah, I've been doing it since year 11. And that's the shot that you fucking chase it with. That's the bracer where they go, whoa, really? Uh, and and they go, that's fucking crazy. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it, it is. It's, you know, I have people out there who've listened since they were 12 years old and they've, and they've written to tell me so. I mean, I, I, I'm astonished by it endlessly. And I'm I'm very thankful that all of you allow me to do the thing I'm best at. Thank you for letting me download uh, into your ears and into your iPod vaginas and letting me talk and just kind of talk in fucking circles. You know I mean? Yeah, I, I know I'm probably better when I'm telling stories. Uh, I've been hearing that from people and, uh, 
I know people say get out of your own head and just do a show and be funny. And, and I, I know those things. And, and I'm thankful that you guys have not fled in terror at the fact that a lot of these shows have been taken that scalpel to the walnut of a brain of mine and trying to chip out whatever the fuck I can. So thank you for allowing me to do that. Uh, I'm thankful for everybody who's worked on this show for me. You know what I mean? I'm, thank, I'm thankful that, uh, or with me and for me, nobody works for me. Uh, I'm thankful for Gio who, who works incredibly hard for me and, and is doing everything he can now to get me uh, on video. And, and he wants to, you know, every one of these names I'm about to say wants me to be bigger than I am. And they're frustrated that I'm not, and they're frustrated that I do not do anything about it. And I understand that. Um, I haven't lost them completely yet, but, but it's good to know that they, they aspire to have things be better for me. And I appreciate that. Gio is one. He is a guy who, you know, he built the YouTube channel. He, he, he stepped up at a time that I really need somebody to go ahead and help me out. And I appreciate it. He's always, and he's from the beginning. Like he, you know, Gio, uh, he, he thinks I'm really good at this. Like, I mean, he, and he tells me that all the time and I'm thankful for that. He's constantly there to cheerlead and, uh, and make sure now, look, he, does he rev a bunch? Yes. Does he, does he get crazy? Like I do? Yes. Can he be petulant like me? Certainly he can. But at the same time, I recognize that kind of behavior and, and, uh, we're always able to work through it. So I'm thankful for to Gio, uh, for, I'm sorry, thankful to Gio for his patience and, and the work he's contributed to the show. I'm thankful for Ryan, our good friend, Ryan Dirks, who does all of the web stuff, because this is a dude like, yeah, I haven't paid him anything that he's been worth. I mean, this guy has just gone ahead. He works a real job, has a farm, has a family. And then uh, when it's time to redo the website, I contact him and he's like, yeah, man, I want to. He just wants to do it to help the show. And I, and that's astonishing to me that he would step up like that, but it's really cool. And I appreciate it very much. So I want to thank, I'm thankful for Ryan for being in my life. I'm thankful for Jimmy Pardo and Matt Belknap because if it's not for them, uh, you're, you probably don't know who I am. Uh, a lot of you, well, some of you may have come in after the fact, but I mean, I, I don't know if I would even had the, the chance to do my own show without being on never not funny for a year. And uh, have we had problems? I've never had problems with Matt. Matt and I get along fine. Uh, Jimmy and I, eh, you know, we butted heads here and there. Um, certainly at the end of my run on Never Not Funny, things were not good. And then uh, they were always kind of cool slash cordial, but uh, but we're friends now. And, you know, I, I get I get to, you know, I talk to him. I, I see him occasionally. And uh, again, he's everybody's lives change. You know, he's got a son. He's got, he's got a wife. He's got all sorts of important things going on. And I have uh, me trying to be the best I can, but uh, you know, I can talk to Jimmy on a level that I don't know if anybody else in the world can talk to Jimmy and vice versa. I mean, he can, he can hear me in ways that nobody else has. And, and I try to do the same for him. And, you know, occasionally every once, every couple of months, three months, five months, uh, we find time and we go and we have some Chinese food and we talk for fucking seven hours. And I'm thankful for that opportunity. And like I said, thankful for Matt, because not only did Matt, you know, involve me in Never Not Funny, um, but also, you know, he, he, he involved me in the special thing, uh, the uh, special thing universe and, and produced my CD and uh, has always been encouraging me to do another. And uh, and I want to and we'll see, you know, but but thank you to Matt and Jimmy, because, again, without them, you're not hearing my voice, probably. Um, thank you to Lily Von Stupp. I'm thankful for her. Uh, she produced this show for nine years. Oh, I'm, and I'm also, of course, I'm thankful for Eric Butterfield because this, this also, this whole enterprise also doesn't start without him. He's, he's almost in the Jimmy and Matt pantheon because he fucking drove to my house with fucking equipment. And look, you know, the legend by now, but this is just for new people. You know, this for this show right now is only for Ryan Hess, uh, Ryan Hess, who I Ubered the other day and told me, he told me he'd been on Doug loves movies. And I was like, Oh, I have a podcast. And then, uh, and then we wound up talking and he's like, yeah, I'll give your show a listen, which he's never going to. But at the same time, if he listens now, he knows that this is all for him. I'm just breaking this down. So he knows what I'm saying. Uh, I'm thankful for Lily Von Stupp. I'm thankful for Eric Butterfield, first of all, for stepping up and saying, you know what? Fuck this, man. You have to do a show and I will come to your house and do all the work. And because, again, if he doesn't do it, I, I'm, I would not be talking to you right now. I'm fully confident in that. I would have found another way to reach you guys, uh, but certainly not via this medium. And certainly not in this kind of show. Uh, and, and so I'm thankful for Eric. I'm re- and I'm thankful for Lily Von Stupp because she came along when it looked like the show was going to end because Eric was, uh, he had family conflicts. 
I guess is a nice way to say it. <laughs> That's a good way to say his wife hated me, right? That's a good way to say that. Um, I don't know if she, and, and I, who knows? I, I don't know if she didn't know me enough to hate me. I think she was just resenting the fact that her husband was driving 45 miles to work for a stranger and not getting anything out of it, except for the joy of bringing me to the masses. Uh, and then the, she was letting me in her house and she would come home from work and I'd be sitting at the kitchen table and she'd been working hard all day. And she's just like, who the fuck is this guy, man? So I guess I can see that. Uh, but once that ended, I, I, I thought the show was over. And then Lily Von Stupp, who is uh, my great friend, and I, I consider her my sister, and she she stepped up and said, hey, look, I can help. You know, I'm a radio producer, so just tell me what you need me to do. And and that was it. And then for the next nine years, uh, she was involved, and, and she was you guys. You in the room is who she was. I would talk. She would laugh. And, uh, and that was important. She didn't laugh because she had to. She laughed because she thought I was funny. Now, the last couple of years that I think maybe she laughed because she thought it was her job. Maybe. Maybe I felt that way. Now, maybe I'm a crazy person. But at the same time, man, you know, people grow apart and things, uh, people change. And she started to uh, have, you know, all sorts of physical issues. And it probably hurt for her to sit in a chair and listen to my nonsense for fucking four or five hours. So, uh, so, so things came to a head. And unfortunately, she had to move on. But... That said, she and I are still great friends. I actually had lunch with her on Monday. Uh, no Chinese food. I went and took her to the Olive Garden because, look, man, I do the best for my friends. I <laughs> uh, picked up Lily and she wore a little, you know, it's funny because I, I even texted her. I'm like, hey, look, I, I put on aftershave today. I apologize because she's allergic to all sorts of smells. So she had to wear a surgical mask and we went out and we, uh, it was great. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of her and happy for her. She continues to do burlesque. She runs her Patreon uh, she's with Eddie and they live in the house together with roommates who are nice guys, all magicians. It's like that thing where it's just a crazy fucking animal house, man. You walk in, there's a dude building balloon dogs and another dude working on a fucking magic trick. And another dude wants you to guess which hand. I mean, it's just, it's a zoo. It's crazy. It's like a, it's like magic castle South. <laughs> Uh, or North magic castle, North. I apologize. Uh, and I, and now you know where she lives. Well, North of the magic castle, certainly. So she, uh, if she didn't step up again, another, it's another thing. She, I, I would not be doing this that you would not be hearing me. So, uh, I love Lily and I, and I'm thankful for her. Uh, David Hernandez, who is the, uh, you know, he does, he does everything for this show. He does the, the music that you hear. He does the artwork that you see. Uh, you know what? I'm just Roger Daltrey and I'm like, see me, feel me, hear me. And then David goes, okay. And then he produces things that you can see and feel and, and touch and hear. And, and he makes the show tangible. He makes the show, uh, cause you know, it's, it's, I've often talked before to him. I'm just like, dude, I talk, but you, you come in and you, you add the color. You, you do all the craziness. I mean, I, and, and, and because he, he and I always have this beef where he's like, man, look, nobody cares about the art. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? I go, I do. I care about it. It makes the show unique. Thank you. I'm, I'm I, because even if I do a show that I don't think is great, uh, I know that he's going to do artwork that's going to, that's going to carry the day. And I, and it makes me happy. And the fact that he's, uh, given of his time and his talent for so many years, just because he saw an opportunity to do so. And also he's dude, he's so prolific. Like he's instantly more fucking prolific than I could ever hope to be. He'll, he'll call me with five ideas. Does it frustrate him when I don't do any of them? Yes. Uh, does it leave him in a lurch where he's just like, Hey man, I got this idea and then this, and let's do this and that and that. And I'm like, yeah. And then I hide in my apartment for four days. Yeah. I mean, that leaves him frustrated. I'm sure. And, and, uh, and I'm glad he hasn't completely walked away up to this point. You know what I mean? Because there's there you can just throw your hands up and just go, yeah, I don't I, I can't help you anymore, man. If you're not gonna help yourself, I I, I can't help you. Um But he's 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 hung in there and he's he's stayed with me. And I mean this is guy this guy's been he's been my friend for thirty seven years. I mean that that's that's it's crazy. I mean it, it it's I I always whenever you speak in these giant numbers, you know, you this show has been on the air for over 10 years. We're into year 11. That's crazy. The fact that I've known David for 37 years. That's crazy. I thought of this in the car, in the car the other day. I'm driving in nine years. I'll be 60, not even eight and a half in eight and a half years. I'll be 60 years old. What the fuck? Oh my Christ. Just, just get me some fucking Metamucil and a bowl of fucking porridge. God damn it. That makes no sense. And I know you think to yourself, well, that's eight and a half fucking years, dude. I was just 50. I mean, like yesterday it fucking flies when you're old, you don't see it coming. It just, you know, I'll tell you what, that's a good reason I'm alone on Thanksgiving tomorrow. So I can, you know, maybe slow things down as I sit in my apartment and hope the time doesn't go so goddamn fast because man, nine years, eight and a half, eight and a half years, I'll be 60 years old. 
Now, at the same time, will I still be talking to you guys? I hope so. Uh, I hope it'll be on a, you know, maybe from a stage or from a larger thing or maybe from, yeah, and fuck that. I'll have YouTube. I, I will always have this. I'll control this. I own this. I own this motherfucker. If I get hired to do other things, that's great. But I mean, this is, this is for me and you, this is, you know, Wu-Tang is for the children. This is for me and you. Uh, so I'm thankful for David. I'm thankful that David is, uh, cares enough and sees enough value in this show to stay involved to the extent that he does. Uh, he gives, he gives artwork. He does music. I mean, like I said, I'll just get a fucking song in my email and I'm like, God damn it. That's, that's just beautiful. I mean, and I, I love, I love him and I love the fact that he steps up and I'm thankful that he's in my life and he cares enough to participate. So I, I, I definitely thankful for David. Uh, I'm thankful for friends. I'm thankful for my friends, Pat and Kyle, you know, Pat Francis and his nephew, Kyle, they, uh, they helped really, they didn't even help. They, they facilitated rebirth this summer. They came over and painted my apartment. They hooked up my television. They, they, they put a thing on the wall to hide the cords. I mean, they did all the things that I, I don't or can't do. They stepped up and at the cost of a pizza, literally, I mean, the, that time I went out to drive all night and then I came home and they had finished the apartment without telling me. I, it just, it, it's, it's just crazy. And Pat, you know, Pat called me today and he's like, Hey, look, um, I'm just calling because I want to invite you to Thanksgiving dinner, but we're not having Thanksgiving dinner at our house, <laughs> but this is an invite without an invite. Just know that you were thought of. And if we were going to be home, we would want you here. And, uh, you know, I just got out of the gym. So I'm trying not to cry in the car because somebody reached out to me like that. It made me very happy. And, and, uh, because Pat is, Pat is an amazing person. He's a fantastic friend. And uh, he's also very talented in his own right. Works really fucking hard. I mean, you go listen to the Rock Solid podcast. If you haven't heard it yet, go subscribe. He gets guests that you wouldn't imagine any normal human could just get in a in an office in Sherman Oaks. It's crazy to me. I like when he got Sammy Hagar, he got Rick Springfield, he got these people, and, and I just I just marvel at it. Susanna Hoffs. Uh, he just had fucking Ann Wilson from Heart. Uh, or did he have Nancy? I think he had Nancy Wilson. I apologize. He had one of the Wilson sisters. Uh, he, he had the, the, he had the fingers, not the mouth. Does that make sense? All right, there you go. He had fingers, Wilson, not mouthy Wilson. And, uh, and I don't even know if that show's come out yet, but I mean, dude, he's, he's, uh, he's such a hard worker in his professional life and his personal life. And he's a kind hearted man who would do anything for his friends. So I'm grateful for Pat and Kyle who, uh, who is his nephew may as well be his son because he has every good trait that Pat also has. And, uh, and I, you know, it's funny when I first met Kyle, I was like, well, this kid, because he has a kid, he's like 22 or whatever the fuck when I met him, maybe 21. And I was like, well, who's this guy? He's going to start hanging out at poker and all this. And then, uh, you realize, oh, he's funny. Oh, he's smart. Oh, he's quick. And he's genuine and he's kind. And he, uh, and he asks how I'm doing and he tells me how he's doing and, and I'm proud of him. I've kind of watched him grow up a little bit here, you know, just in bits and pieces. And now he's engaged. He's got a, he's got Marissa in his life. And, and, uh, so I'm proud and, and I'm thankful to have, to have Kyle in my life as well as Pat. Uh, you know, as far as personal stuff, I, I mean, these are friends and people I love and people I know. I mean, I'm thankful for, for, for Mike Siegel. I'm thankful for Paul Gilmartin. You know, I'm, I'm thankful for, uh, all of the guys in the UN of evil, you know what I mean? Who have stepped up. I'm, th- I'm thankful. My friend Murray Valeriano, uh, recovered. He had heart surgery this year and I'm thankful that he, he turned out to be all right because he's a good guy. And, uh, you know, and that's scary. You're young. You got a kid that you just, you're just like fucking four or whatever. And you went up sick like that. That's insane. So I'm thankful that he made it through. Um, the UN of evil guys, you know, uh, big guy, Jimmy O evil, Dennis, Ock, Jeff, Woj, Kenny, Chris B, uh, all of these guys. I'm thankful for March because I'm going to go and spend spring training a week in Arizona with those guys. And I'm going to laugh my balls off while we play cornhole and, and shoot pool and play poker and, and watch, watch baseball in the stadium and then watch NCAA basketball and bet and cook and laugh and just act like idiots. And, uh, and if I could do that, I mean, you know, I'm, <laughs> I would love that frat house atmosphere every day. I would live with those fucking guys. It'd be great. Now would they live with me? Of course not. They have no interest in that, but, but I'm thankful to have them in my life. And I'm thankful for that one week a year when I'm able to get together with them and we can all just do and Eric, and Eric too, Eric E-Man will be there. It's just to, to have all of us together. And, uh, it's just, it's just fantastic. You know what I'm, I'm thankful too, that Jimmy O is in my life via, you know, text. I get to talk to him. I'm thankful whenever I get a group text from those guys, it's just, it reminds me that I'm, I'm part of, uh, another family 
and that I'm part of a brotherhood that's been around for almost 40 years now. And, and the fact that we're still all friends and, and, uh, some of us still like one another, that's, that's amazing to me. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful to say that I love those guys and I'm happy that they're in my life. Uh, like I said, Siegel and, and who's all, who always reaches out to me to see how I am. Uh, Paul Gilmartin, same thing. I don't see Paul nearly enough, but he always reaches out and asks how I'm doing and what I'm doing and where I'm going. And, and they supported me like when I, they came, I think came to live shows and they, they, uh, this, this will sound, I don't want it to sound arrogant, but I mean it. I'm thankful that they recognize my talent because sometimes you can just be friends with people. Like, I mean, I, I, I love Mike Siegel. I think he's a great joke writer. Same thing with Paul. He's a fucking fantastic stand up and, and a brilliant joke writer. And I love that they reflect that upon me and they feel the same way. And that, that, uh, I'm honored by that. And I'm thankful to have them feeling, uh, because again, I respect them so much. And I think they're so talented. The very fact that they would keep me in their inner circle and be friends with me. I mean, that's a gift. So I'm, I'm thankful for them. Uh, in, in, in personal life, I'm trying to improve a lot of things as you know. And so I'm, I'm thankful for, uh, I'm thankful for Shannon who for five years now has seen me every Monday, uh, virtually every Monday. And, and done everything she can to get a machete out and claw through whatever fucking jungle of nonsense I have I've constructed in my head or thrown in front of her to make sure we didn't get to any real problems. <laughs> um, I've learned a lot about myself through her, and uh, she's allowed me to do that because she hasn't ever. You know, the other experiences I had with someone where I sat down to talk to them, they would tell me what I was thinking. They would tell me how I felt. They would tell me what I should do. Uh, she allows me to talk. Now I've, I've, I've advised her to not do that to a certain extent because I mean, you know me, I mean, I, again, what are we, I don't even know where we're at now, but I mean, I, I would talk for, I could bury the whole hour therapy session with her and then finish with it, you know, just do a greatest hits on what happened the past week. And, and, but I try to do real work in there and I tell her, look, jump in. If you see something you want to pursue, if you want me to stop, if you see me going on some road where I'm just, I'm venting or talking about that. And she goes, well, it's all, you know, it's all part of it. I go, I understand, but I, you, you got to grab me sometimes and shake me to keep me out of doing that. she's like, all right. And she has done that. She's because she's, you know, she's like five feet tall. She's very young. Um, certainly compared to me, she's young, but, but she, she commands the room with me and, and I appreciate her doing that for me. So I'm thankful to have Shannon to talk to, and I'm thankful for John, my trainer at the gym. Um, have I let him down a little bit? Yes. I've let you guys down. I've let me down. I've let a lot of people down over my life and I continue to do so. And I'm trying to stop. But, uh, but John never judges. John is just, is just a really good person who really wants to help people, which you don't find a lot. You know, people have ulterior motives, a lot of clock watchers, a lot of, well, let's get this over with. And also it's very easy for him to give up on me because I've given up on me a lot of times. You know, if I'm choking down chocolate bars or I'm eating fast food or I'm not, I'm not doing cardio, it would be very easy for him to go, well, dude, I don't, you're fucking wasting your time and your money, but he doesn't see me as a dollar sign. He doesn't see me as a paycheck. I mean, he charges me, uh, you know, what basically a, a rate that's different from his other rates because he knows who I am, but he's been seeing me for five years and he knows I'm not going anywhere. And, uh, and he wants to help me. That's another thing. Like Richard, when I, when I first started seeing him, John wants to help me. You know, he came to me today and I was, I was pleasantly surprised. He goes, all right, man, in December, we have to up the intensity here and we're going to start doing this. And he had a plan. He had a plan. I mean, after five years, he doesn't have to have a fucking plan. And this guy's got, you know, training clients at two different gyms. He's got another, he manages an apartment complex. He didn't have to take that time for me. I mean, he sees me three times a week already and he could say, well, that's enough. But instead on his off hours, he came up with a plan for what we're going to do starting in December to meet the goals that I have. And, and I'm thankful that there's somebody out there who cares enough about me to, to step up and, and, uh, and do that for me. So I'm, I'm thankful for John. And, uh, and now I'm, I'm going to do this and it's, I, I will do my best to not get completely hung up. And I'm going to tell you that, uh, well, just fuck it. I, you know who I'm thankful for? Uh, I'm thankful. For, I'm thankful for Dave Fogerson who listens to this show and he always interacts with me on Facebook and he's interacted with me on Twitter as well. And every week I know he listens because he's current. He says something that's relevant to what happened that week. He posts a meme. He posts a comment. He's written me in private and he's always had good words to say to me. And I appreciate that. Uh, I'm thankful for Dave Trebilzi, who's contacted me on Twitter, uh, on occasion, just to tell me how much he loves the show. He loves listening. He offered me to, I, I believe David was the one who, who wanted me to come to his forge in, in Illinois and, uh, and bang out a knife when I was watching forged in fire. And he said, you know, it's always open to you. If you want to do it, you let me know when you're here and we'll take care of it. Uh, I'm thankful for Liana Dixon who has been a fan and a listener and a friend for, for so long. I've been lucky enough to meet her socially. 
uh, when she came to see me do shows, but also I've been, I've had dinner with Liana in Vegas. She went out with me and Jill and, and at the time she was dating somebody and, and, uh, and she's always included me in her life and she sent me gifts and she's sent me praise and she's there for every live stream. And then she's there on the, on the fan club page. And I, uh, and I don't know what I would do without Liana Dixon. And I'm, I'm grateful and thankful that she's in my life. I'm thankful for Jamie Gonzalez, who has also become a friend outside of the show. You know, she's active on the show pages, but she's texted me and she's written me notes. And she said, uh, you know, when I'm in my head on a Thursday, when the show hasn't come out, she'll text me. She's like, what can I do? What, what do you need? Do you need a pep talk? She'll send me a photo. She'll send me anything. Um, you know, and I love hearing about her, 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 she just got married, her husband, Hector and her daughter, Allie. And, and, um, and, and she's always there. If I need something, she said, said that she's contact me and I don't, I don't abuse the privilege, but whenever I'm in my head or whenever something's up, she'll contact me and she'll contact me just to talk football. She'll contact me for any reason. And I, and I, I can't say enough about Jamie Gonzalez. So I'm thankful that she's in my life. I'm thankful for Stephen Mudd. Although it might be Stephen Mood. I don't know how you pronounce Stephen, but Stephen's in Sweden and he runs me on Snapchat all the time. And he, he sends me like a little Schmitty, uh, there's cause they have emojis on Snapchat, but then they have little characters and he's made a, he's made a guy who looks like little Schmitty and he always has him in weird adventures. I'm grateful and thankful for Stephen Mudd contacting me from overseas and, and staying in my life. I'm, I'm thankful for Tom Herbertson who, uh, I met via burlesque. Uh, he was a guy who I met at the, at the three clubs during Lily's shows. And then he started listening to the podcast and he interacts on the page and he's always, uh, he's, he's just been a guy who he would come up to me in person and go, oh, I, I listened to the show and here's what I thought. And he's never been one to be shy with his thoughts and telling me that he's listening and to support the show. And so I thank Tom and also Tom's in Mensa. So I got to thank him because eventually someday, if I can get that other 18 extra IQ points, I got to have somebody who has a cudgel to bang in the fucking door and, and present me. I'm sure they've got some fucking robe wearing group around a goddamn ocular table, like the infinity symbol. And I've got to have Tom walk me in and they burn my hand with a candle and I got to answer a math problem and sure the fuck I'm in, I'm in mensa all of a sudden hey and I'll blow your ass out give me a math book I'll do a fucking word problem and blow your ass out <laughs> I'm thankful for Cameron Casper who has stepped up and is interacting with me on the on, on the internet and always has great things to say and uh and you know not just he, he's been very nice you know in, in saying you know people comment and they like the show but also for him saying that, that uh, he's, he's amazed at my storytelling availability. I, I took a screenshot of it. He's like, I, I'll never never not be amazed at how good of a storyteller Mike is. And, and uh, those words mean something to me very much. So I'm thankful that Cameron Casper stepped up. I'm thankful for Austin in Salt Lake, who this week sent me two pillows. And I don't mean that in the planes, trains and automobiles way. I mean, he literally sent me he because he, he heard me talking about rebirth and fixing things. And he's like, what kind of pillows do you want? And and I told him I wasn't sure. I didn't know I was talking about memory foam. And he's like, look, I work in this industry and I have two that I think you would like. And he sent them to me and they've arrived and I'm sleeping on them and they're amazing. And again, just just the graciousness of people and and their generosity always amazes me. And and so thank you, Austin in Salt Lake. He said he's been listening since Never Not Funny. Uh, he and I have been contacting each other via Twitter and I thanked him and, and for him to, to even think of me in this way, I had to give my apartment number, by the way, I had to, he's like, they won't send it to the PO box. And I said, well, here, here's my, uh, here's my apartment number and my address. And then I said, him, I go, Hey, I probably should have asked if you were going to kill me before I sent you my home address. And he's just like, ah, I was considering it, but no, I won't now that you brought it up. Cause now there's a fucking paper trail, right? Austin. Uh, I'm thankful for people who come to the live stream and hang out all the time. I'm thankful for Daniel Valerio, uh, or it could be, could be Villarreal. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure, but Daniel V we'll say it that way. Sal and Jill who always show up there. Uh, thank you. They are, they are interact on the live stream. They interact on the page and, 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 and they've been very nice and gracious. And, and just, again, anybody who supports, I I'm thankful to have you in my life. Uh, all of the Michael Caldwell's in my life. Thank you so much. Uh, all of the KC's in my life, Kristen Cruz, KC bills and I, and Andrea bills and, and KC Murphy Murph. Uh, I'm so thankful to have all of you in, in my life and writing me and then supporting me. Murph told me what, what printer to buy. I mean, again, I, I feel like like all of you are just, you're just such a, a, an amazing support net to have. I reach, I ask for something and it shows up. I'm like, I need it. Hey, what printer should I buy? People tell me, Hey, what, uh, what, what phone server should I switch to? Well, I use this one. I mean, you guys have been so cool and, 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 uh, you all want me to succeed. That's my favorite thing is all of you. You want me, you just, you're on my side. And I know, and then look, I'm on your side. I want good things for all of you, but, but you can get in your own head and go, Oh, well, what does this matter? And, and, you know, I, I, 
I have to remember to be thankful for you guys and for the step ups that you do. I have to, I'm thankful for young Jaden who came over and tried to help me hook up my service. Uh, I'm thankful for Ahmad with a seven who lives in Kuwait and will be here in December and who, uh, who gave me some of the greatest adventures of my life by bringing me to Kuwait and taking me to Japan and, and, uh, and becoming a friend. That's the best part. He's coming here. I, I wrote out to him and I was like, I'm thankful for Justin Mantel who will be here in December. And he's like, Hey man, I'm coming to town for work. And I usually pick up Justin and we go and have dinner and I, I drop him at his hotel and I take him back to the airport later. And he, cause he works here, you know, on occasion. And, and I've, and when I was in Phoenix, I saw Justin and Mary and I saw, and we're friends again, we become friends. So Ahmad is going to be here for two weeks. And then Justin's like, Hey man, I'm coming to town on these dates. And I wrote him and I said, Hey, look, well, Ahmad's in town. Would it be cool if he tagged along? He's like, of course. And then, uh, and he also said, well, Ahmad bring his flying carpet because he's a terrible, terrible racist. Good for you, Justin. Uh, <laughs> but then I said to Ahmad, I go, look, um, my friend's coming, Justin, and I'm going to pick him up and then I'm also going to take him to dinner, but you're welcome to come with if you'd like. Uh, but if you don't, I totally get that. And he's like, Ahmad said, dude, I'm, I'm coming to town to hang out with your friends and hang out and watch movies at your house and play games. That's, that's it. I, I have no, cause again, he, he doesn't want to see landmarks. He doesn't need to go to the fucking La Brea tar pits and find a fucking brontosaur cock. I, I, I don't know. A brontosaurus cock, not a brontosaur cock. You know what? We talked about sore cock earlier in the show, didn't we? Uh, no, oh man, I got a brontosaur. I'll tell you, I got a brontosaur cock right now. Um, <laughs> but it was cool that Ahmad is, is coming to hang out. Cause that takes all the fucking pressure off. Cause I mean, I got, you know, literally I'm, I, I don't know what I, I, I try to make plans and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going to show Ahmad some awesome artwork. Like, I mean, I don't fucking know what he wants to see and what he doesn't want to see. Uh, but I'm thankful that he's coming to town to spend that time. And I'm thankful that he's going to get to hang out with me and Justin. I might take him to poker. I don't, I don't know, but he's, it's just, it's just great. So I'm, I'm thankful that he's coming. Um, I'm thankful for fearful Jesuit who sponsors this show via the paranoid strain podcast. Uh, you can find it in the iTunes store right now. It's got the nine 11 episode, the second one and, and, uh, subscribe and download and then write him and tell him that you love it. Please put a review in the iTunes store saying that you love the fearful Jesuits, uh, paranoid strain podcast and mention us because then he'll continue to support the show and he'll continue to let me to go to his house. Uh, I'd go up to the compound and he'll continue to make me homemade ramen, which is important. He'll continue to show me Mandy in his basement, which I, I loved in uh, the coldest basement in America. Maybe you can get some heat. Maybe you can get some wood if you, if you go ahead and subscribe to the show. Uh, but I'm thankful to have fearful Jesuit in my life. And, and, uh, and because he also is another one who texts me and go, how you doing? What do you got to do? You got to just fucking do it, man. You're funny. And pep talks, you know, people who, who don't need to give them, but they do. Uh, I thank them. That's, that's nice. Um, I'm thankful for Alan Miller, who has uh, stepped up and, and always has been interacting on this show and always, you know, sometimes he's a smart ass and sometimes I'm like, eh, fucking Alan. But then a lot of the times he's, I mean, the fact that he's still around, you know, I mean, although the fact that he's like, man, I got to see you live. I can't wait to see you live. And then I came to Cincinnati and he's in Kentucky. He's like, yeah, I can't make it. I got to sell a spoon in my driveway. All right, well, fine, Alan. Um, but I'm thankful that he cared enough to tell me. And I'm thankful that the next time I'm in Cincinnati, I'm sure I'll see him sitting in the audience. Uh, I'm thankful to Hannah, who I mentioned earlier. Did I, that, that she's in England? I might've, I might have mentioned that she's a transplant. Uh, Hannah and I have been, we've been talking, you know, she Snapchats me occasionally and we we've talked on WhatsApp as well. Um, and she's, uh, she's always been there with a pep talk. She's always been there to tell me about her adventures in England. And, uh, and she's come to see me live, you know, when she was in America, she was in Milwaukee and, and, uh, and I'm grateful and thankful to have Hannah in my life. She's my eyes on the ground over there in England. And if anything goes on, along with Liam, our friend Liam and our friend Hugh, Hugh W., he's also over there. And our friend Joseph Nickel, who's there. And our friends Alex and Laura, who are over there in Ireland. We've got a whole contingent in Europe, folks. I just named eight people. That doesn't seem like a contingent. But still, I'm thankful for the presence of 40-year-old boy listeners in Europe. And, and, uh, and I want to get over there. At some point, we'll see. Uh, I am thankful for Chuck Hudspeth, my man on the ground in the Carolinas and all of the things he's done for the show, all the recommendations. He was the one who recommended that December 20th, we do the live stream with, for, uh, for Christmas and, and don't think that I won't in fact, think that I will, because I've already scheduled it December 20th live stream. And, uh, I'll be opening Christmas cards and whatever the, whatever gifts you guys send. And there might not be any, if there's no gifts, then we'll just do a regular live stream. But if there's stuff to open, I'll be unboxing it on December 20th, uh, on the YouTube live stream. I don't think I'll be on Twitch by then, although we're trying. And that's a, that's a whole other fucking story. I'll tell you next week. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm grateful for Michelle who is my friend from Salem who comes here on business and I get to pick her up. We, we spent last Monday together, went and had some Indian food and had a good time. Uh, and I'm great. I'm grateful that she always thinks of me when she comes to town and wants to hang out. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to have Michelle in my life. Uh, I'm thankful to have Paul Cheever slash hoove, uh, up in Seattle, the Chiva Cabra, the Chiva Cabra. 
I call him the Chivacabra because I know him very intensely, but I'll go with Chivacabra. That's the real band name. Uh, and he picked me up when I was in Seattle this summer to go see Pearl Jam. We hung out and it was fantastic. Uh, I'm grateful to have Paul in my life. He's always there if I need him. And that's fucking cool. He's reached out to me via text several times. I'm grateful for Mike. Uh, I don't know if Mike wants me to say his last name, Mike W., who uh, who met me in Seattle and took me to Pearl Jam the second night and uh, who actually bought the fucking laptop that I'm recording this show on. Michael stepped up in a way that's... that's uh, crazy and ridiculous. And it makes me want to give him all the money in the fucking world and do what I can. Because again, and, and you know, it's funny. I talk about, uh, you know, I, I, uh, was it mean anything and should I be famous and should I reach out? Well, I mean, I think there's nothing more that a Michael W, a Mike W who bought this laptop would want more for than to, than for me to be noticed and heard by other people. And so I have to keep that in mind. It's not like this thing where I can tamp myself down and go, well, nobody cares. Nobody wants to hear you. In fact, you guys would all prefer that I grew out of whatever ghetto I've put myself in and explored it and made new fans. So then you could go, yeah, I knew him when I fucking been with that guy from the beginning, been with that guy from the fucking jump. Uh, I want to thank Andrew Bennett. Our friend Andrew is in Boston and he is an Instagram influencer and he has always been gracious and written me. And he's another one who like Gio was like, dude, you got to have a YouTube channel. You've got to have a presence on Instagram. You've got to go ahead and you, you need to be visual. You need to move on with more things. Uh, I was content to just sit and do a podcast, but he and Gio, these, a lot of people have really, uh, tried to get me out there and, and it's working, you know, I'm out there. It's, it's incremental, but it's going to be even more and more. Uh, in the coming months, you know, I, I, and again, I'll tell you more about my hunt this week. As a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> um, I'm thankful for my friend Maki, uh, my friend Maki, who I get to go visit on Maki Mondays. I haven't been able to see her in a while because she is uh, having her house renovated and she is, you know, she's not a traveling person. I get to go up and see her where she lives. She lives North of me. Uh, and then I get to go there and we have lunch and we talk and I sit on her unbelievably comfortable couch and she's actually sat in on a recording of this show. Justin has too. I recorded in Justin's hotel room once I've recorded at Maki's house. Of course, you've heard that show. Uh, I'm grateful for Judy with a speedboat who came up on that show. As a matter of fact, uh, but Maki is, uh, you know, I love her. She's my great friend. I'm excited. I can't wait to get up to see her again and spend another Maki Monday as soon as I can. Uh, but she's another one who's been very supportive and listen to me fucking vent about nonsense that nobody should ever have to listen to. Uh, and, and thank Thankfully, she was able to sit there and do it because, again, the only reason she did was because the couch is so comfortable. If the couch was not that comfortable, she would, again, shut up and get out because she was able to just settle in and just kind of bl- and, and go, ah, I don't care what he's saying because I'm so comfortable on this goddamn couch. Uh, so I'm grateful for Maki and I'm thankful to have her in my life. Uh, I'm grateful and thankful for Seth and, and Tracy. Uh, Brazil. I, I, I'm glad to have them and our daughter Harper in my life. Uh, I've met them down here and had fun. They, they've come to the shows in San Francisco and brought me gifts that were unprecedented, like a, a signed Mike Schmidt baseball and a jersey. And uh, they gave me a fucking Blackhawks hoodie with my name on it. I mean, they're just they're really amazing, incredible people. Tracy's a teacher. And uh, I don't know what Seth's job is, but he's very busy. And uh, Harper's their beautiful daughter. You may have recalled they, they've been my uh, my photo for a, a few times. Like I've had Harper with the dog, Dufresne, in the in the Yurt Dirt Dirt shirts. And uh, I had Tracy and Harper as a photo a couple of weeks ago. And, and I and then so I'm grateful and thankful that they are part of my life. And I consider them friends. Seth texted, texted me a couple of weeks ago and uh, we had a long talk one night about some stuff. I was I had some stuff going on. He had some stuff going on. And it was uh, it was nice. I was, I was thankful that someone would reach out. So good for him and good for me and good for you guys. <laughs> uh, I'm thankful for Colette and Kurt, uh, Doug, I guess you would call him if I, if you want to, uh, in Cincinnati, they made Cincinnati happen this year. You know, they, they, they brought me out there and I stayed at an Airbnb that, uh, Colette was, was nice enough to actually, you know, recommend and help me find. And, uh, and then Kurt sous me a steak that I'm still talking about. And so, uh, and, and they are, they are true friends and great people. And I'm thankful to have them in my life. And I, and I wish only good things for them. And, and also truthfully, you know, you've all reached out and done things for me and helped me. I hope you know that I'm here for you. You need me You reach out if you, if you need something, uh, and I can do it even if it's time to talk. Cause I'll tell you, there's another, I'm thankful for Dan Prebenda, who's a good man. And, and, uh, he's reached out to me on Facebook a few times and he's a good guy, but also he's, he's reached out and he's like, Hey, I, you know, I need to talk. And I'm like, I've been working or I've been busy and that's just, you know, I can't, you know what I mean? Sometimes I can't do that. So, uh, I don't want to sound like a phony where I'm like, yeah, man, I'm always here. But I mean, if you want to find me via social media and stuff that I'm, I'm always here, it's just, uh, but whatever the fuck. So I'm, I'm thankful for Dan and I'm thankful for Colette and Kurt. Uh, I'm thankful for Patrick Volkler. I'm thankful for Heidi Miller. I'm thankful for uh, Ben, my friend Ben and his husband, Peter. Um, 
I'm thankful for Spencer, who always keeps things uh, rolling on the uh, the Attaboy Brigade page, along with Scotty Palmiter. I'm thankful for Matthew Henshaw and his and Jenny and uh, them stepping up and doing amazing things and 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 always graciously checking out the live stream and participating in the Attaboy page and then on my personal page, and then sending me private notes. You know, Matt's a friend and and uh, I'm I'm proud to call him so. I'm I'm thankful. Uh, I, I'm thankful for my friend Ashley in New Mexico, who's now engaged and getting married. And I'm, I'm proud of her and happy. She works very hard at her job. And so uh, she always reaches out to me. She's she's reached out on, on Snapchat and everything else and to show me her balloon races in New Mexico. Anybody who, sh- anybody who brings me a piece of their life, that I'm thankful for that. Jamilton shares a video of her son all the time, whether he's uh, singing in the bathtub or he's running around in the living room. And, uh, and so thank you, Jamilton. I, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful, like I said, for Ashley, for showing me New Mexico balloon races and green hatch chili cheeseburgers that she thinks that I won't eat or I don't want. <laughs> um, I'm thankful to David Williams, who is uh, my friend and also a playwright and was one of the main reasons, if not the main reason I actually did success is not an option. He transcribed a bunch of stuff for me and told me I had to get back on stage. He handled the New York theater booking. He's just, he's just a good guy. And, and I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for Adam Welker who started the Westside 86 Jokers page and uh, has reached out to me to try and help me get work and and uh, and wants me to succeed in a way that I'm not sure anybody else does. You know, he's always had me at the forefront of his mind whenever he hears of something and he reaches out to me. And uh, it would be my great pleasure to actually make something good happen so Adam could go, see, I, I, I knew it. I knew this guy was going to, all of you certainly, but Adam was a guy from the jump. I mean, he was real young and then he's, you know, he's, I've seen him grow up. So, so I'm glad I'm thankful for Adam to have uh, him in my life. I'm thankful for Todd Rush, who's uh, in the Pacific Northwest and has always reached out to me and, and, uh, you know, came and saw me in Portland and actually had to book. He couldn't hang out afterwards and he's regretted it ever since he's mentioned it a few times. I'll get back up there. I promise Todd. I'm thankful for David Kemp who, uh, has been on board with this show from the jump and has, has always been a supporter. David Kemp has, you want to talk about supporter. David Kemp has little Schmitty tattooed on his calf. I mean, you can't, how much more could you do unless you got my goofy face on your forearm? You know what I mean? Or, but, but he literally has a, a, a life size little Schmitty on his entire calf as a tattoo. And it's dude, you know, it's gotta be amazing for David to see his artwork replicated like that. But to know that it's me, it's like when I always talk about with David, when David does an interlude, imagine, dude, somebody wrote Jesus Christ Superstar about me this year. I literally have a musical about me. I've had songs written about me because of David. It's it's crazy. And to know that someone put me on their skin permanently, to have to know that David Kemp has me on his calf forever, uh, I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful that, that I, I meant enough to these people for me to include them in, in what is going to be the rest of their life. And I, I think it's fantastic. Uh, I'm thankful for my friend Brian Howard. From uh from Atlanta, who's playing bass with Cracker and the Heap, he always reaches out to give me advice. He told me about the Green Apple thing, which is uh, I've I've ignored up till now, and I'm sure it's showing, but that's fine. Uh, I'm thankful for my friend Kilt Bill, who I'm disappointed I didn't get to see at Podfest this year. There was a group of people, you know, like Ron and you know what people at, at Podfest, uh, the Hanson brothers, Ron and Dave. And uh, Sarah J, who I, I've seen at PodFest many times. I mean, these are people who would always come and we would get together. And uh, to not have a PodFest this year, it was really sad. Jane and Mary and Barry and, uh, like I said, Heidi and, and uh, Mel, all, all these people we used to get together during PodFest. And I'm sorry it didn't occur, but I'm, I'm thankful to have had the times that I've had in the past. And I know in the future I'll get to see these people again. But but thank you. Uh, Kilt Bill reaches out to on text occasionally. Ron and Dave are great. Uh, I've talked to Sarah J via text. And, and um, you know, I, I'm... I'm grateful to have these people in my life. I'm thankful that they care enough to even reach out and contact me. Uh, the Canada crew, because I've been going to Toronto and, I, and that's going to be an annual thing. Like I talked about March and spring training. I'm grateful and thankful for the Canada crew. I'm thankful for Ken and Tanya and Mike. I'm thankful for Johnny Floor. I'm thankful for Kendra with uh, Tay and Sarah. Uh, I'm thankful for Rick uh, Wellbanks. I'm thankful for uh, Michelle Woods, Michael Woods. I don't know. I still can't pronounce it. I'm thankful for Scotty Sarna. I'm, I'm thankful for... Uh, for, for everybody in Canada who, who supported, I'm thankful for Tresha and Ken. I'm thankful for everybody up there who who's given me a second home uh, because that's exactly what it is. I mean, I, you know, I've talked on this show and I've goofed around and joked around about moving and, and going, well, I'm going to go up to Canada. I'm going to do that I, eventually. Uh, and it was a goof in the beginning, but I'll tell you what, the more I think about it and the more it comes up, uh, yeah, I could see me doing that. I, I mean, and, and because again, I now have a, 
I think I've got at least 10 people that I know up there. That's enough. Once you get into double figures, you can go live there because I don't need any more friends than that. I've got, you know, 10 people in a Trudeau. I'm sure I know a Trudeau at some point. Justin will want to meet me once I move up there. They'll roll out the red carpet and me and the rest of the fucking Canada crew will just hang out, sit around a fire pit and talk for the rest of our lives. That's it. I'm just, I not, they all have to quit their jobs and entertain me. I've entertained you motherfuckers for almost 11 years. Now it's your turn to entertain me. I'm going to move to Canada and you got to quit your jobs and just fucking sit around and talk to me and keep me entertained. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm sure you will. <laughs> um, I'm thankful for, uh, for Manny Garcia, who is, uh, who is, he, he, he supports this show, uh, you know, financially certainly. And, and, but also he met me at PodFest. He came up to me once and he took me aside and he, he told me, he's like, you don't know how good you are at what you do. Like, you don't know how important what you do is. And, uh, and he constantly reflects that back to me even now. I mean, he told me that fucking five years ago, maybe at PodFest, but now whenever I do a live stream, he shows up and he's, he's nice enough to contribute financially, but more importantly, he listens to my jokes and he repeats them back to me. And he's just like genius. That's fucking brilliant. And and he's, you know, active on social media, certainly. But I mean, the, the live streams is where he really shines to me because he shows up and he'll, uh, if I say some silly phrase, you know, me, I mean, you know, like alone, alone with the gravy or whatever the fuck I said earlier, uh, he, he will parrot it back to me because he's genuinely hearing what I'm saying. And that that's kind of important to me. I love when somebody quotes a joke from me. It's funny. I, I see all of these other podcasts and, uh, like, you know, like there, there are other podcasts. There, there was a, a Twitter account called podcast quotes and they would quote all these different podcasts. And I'd just be like, dude, if you listen to my fucking show, you would never stop quoting shit. Cause I'm fucking hysterical. Uh, but you don't want to reach out and go, Hey, please listen to my show. Cause I'm eminently quotable. That's just fucking dumb. But when somebody posts, like when, when Max would do an explosion of it, and I saw that he actually listened to the show and pulled out a quote that I said and then created artwork with it. It got, it made me happy. It made me so happy. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful to even have that experience. If you've ever had your words used back to you in a way to make you happy, then, then be thankful because that's what I was. And man, he's a guy like that. He'll listen to something or, you know, anybody will quote a joke and they'll put it on my page or something <laughs> whenever they do it on the Joker's page. It made, cause it, you know what? It indicates they're listening. It indicates that they cared and it indicates that, that I'm good at this. It makes, it reinforces the fact that I'm funny and I'm thankful for that. And Manny is a guy who's always stepped up. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm thankful Manny and, and please know, I mean, I thanked him in the liner notes of my CD and a lot of you were thanked in my CD, but, but, uh, but yeah, it, Manny's important and I'm thankful he's in my life. Uh, I mentioned Alex and Laura in Europe. Let's, let's do, you know what? I'll do this. I'm thankful for Alex and Laura. I'm thankful for Jolene and Mike. I'm thankful for Derek and Mara. I'm thankful for Martine and Lynn, and I'm thankful for Catherine and Matt. Now, I know you're like, why are you grouping all them together? Or some of you may already know why. Uh, these are all weddings that I've been involved in. Uh, Alex and Laura, I, I, they, they asked me to be involved. I went to Derek and Mara's wedding. Uh, Catherine and Matt, they involved me and, and David because David did artwork. Ty Vavoom stepped up and said, hey, I want to get you guys involved. Let's do this. Um, Jolene and Mike, I went to their wedding as well. Martine and Lynn, I recorded and I talked about them on the show. I mean, these are, th- think about that. I mean, in, in the course of almost 11 years of doing this show, 10, 10 years and change, uh, that that's five weddings I've been a part of either physically in, in person or just my voice. They thought enough of me to include me on what was probably the most important day of their lives. And that is, and that is humbling and, and I'm thankful that people thought enough of me to make me part of their life's permanent record. So, so Alex and Laura, Jolene and Mike, Derek and Mara, Martine and Lynn, Catherine and Matt. Uh, thank you. I'm thankful for all of you. Zach and Phoenix. I've gone and recorded at Zach's house. Our buddy, Zach Landis. He also texts me on occasion. Uh, he texted me. He wanted to help me out in Japan because he he knew actually knows fucking Japanese that dude. Um, but I thank him for stepping up and, 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 uh, and let me come out to his place. Uh, Brent and Megan who are up in the upper Northwest may I, I, they came to see me in, uh, in Seattle. I told the story on the air where Brent said he had seen me the last time I was in Seattle and he had come down, uh, on a bus and like, and then, and he was going to take a bus or whatever. And he missed it. Then he had to get out, hitch a ride. I mean, just, just, he went to great lengths to support me in the show and I can't thank him enough. And then Megan, uh, was here. She was in Orange County and she's like, Hey, maybe I'll come and you know, you can record with me in the room. And I said, I'd love that. Just contact me. And then I never heard from her. So, so thank you, Brent. I'm thankful you're in my life, Megan. Eh, 
I'm, I guess I'm glad you married Brent. So good for you guys. I'm glad you're part of it. Uh, but yeah, because in my head, I'm like, am I going to have to go record with Megan down in Orange County? What's she going to do? Is she going to contact me? And then I did not hear from her because again, she was here visiting her grandmother. She had children with her. And so it was probably a nice thing for her to say where she's like, hey, man, I'll be down by you if you want to record with me in the room. That'd be fun to watch. And then I was like, yeah, great. Just let me know. And then fucking radio silence. But uh, but that's fine. I'm I, So I'm thankful for Brent and Megan. And maybe someday uh, she'll get to watch me do a podcast with Brent in the room. That'd be fantastic. Uh, I'm thankful for John. Uh, is another uh, European traveler who's all over the place and has been sending me some very cool photos and videos recently. And I thank him. He was, he's the guy who keeps telling me, you got to play. You got to be in England. Mike, we've got to get you to England. You've got to play here. And, uh, and I agree, uh, but it's a, it's a whole thing, uh, as you know. I mean, I, fuck, I've got to go out to drive tonight to get a bonus. So as far as having money to come to Europe and all that stuff, and look, I'm not broke. I'm not that fucking guy, but at the same fucking time, you know, to go to Europe and set up for a few weeks and then to do some shows and, you know, I, it's going to take some planning and some greenbacks, some uh, euros, some curly money, as I call it. When nice people donated on the live stream, I'm like, oh, we got curly money. So I'm going to have to get some curly money out of, out of that and, and, and make it work. But I will. It's on. It's I want to. Again, like I said, we have a European contingent. There's at least eight people there who would pay to come see me. And that's all that matters. Uh, our friend Lou Fulmer, who lives up north, I, I thank him. Uh, I'm glad that he's in my life. He was supposed to be here again this fall. He came here last year for a jujitsu tournament, and then that wound up getting uh, scotched this year. But uh, but Lou is one of my cop listeners, and and he's always very gracious and very nice. And he's another one who, when I'm down on myself or I put out a show where I'm like, man, what the fuck? He writes me and he's like, dude, do the show whatever you want. Happy, sad, whatever the fuck. We listen to you because we want to hear you. That's what matters to all of us. And uh, and it always every time I read it, I take a screenshot of it and it makes me happy and I read it sometimes even days I'm not recording I'll I'll, I'll be it'll be a Friday or a, or a Tuesday morning and I and I'm like oh this is it these these are the people you do this for they this is this is Lou Fulmer's show this is John's show this is Mary Beth Kirk's show this is uh, who I'm thankful for in Houston who writes me and is kind to me I'm thankful for Stephen Popkin in New York my eyes on the ground in New York always trying to find a venue for me to come out there uh I'm thankful for Dustin in the Northwest and and I'm thankful for JP and and uh, and Jason Kaufman and Jay Campbell. These are these are people who are always engaging me on social media. And and it, and this is your show. This is why I do it. I'm thankful for for you to include me. I'm, I'm thankful for Jonathan Leonard, who who always involves me in wrestling stuff. Uh, Brian Merton and and uh, Paul Pepper and his wife Gloria and and, uh, and the Dark Knight truck. He's he's doing all sorts of stuff this winter. Go check him out. The Dark Knight One Responder Truck. You can go ahead and like the Facebook page and. And, uh, and also they, they help support financially as well as reaching out to me and, and, and saying good things. And, and, uh, this is your guys' show. This is, this show belongs to you. And I have to remember that that's the thing. Erica Burris, uh, my eyes on the ground in, in Wichita, you know, formerly in Monterey, she's, she's out there with, uh, with William and Andy and, and, and supporting the show. And it makes me happy. You know, I'm thankful for Erica. I'm thankful for, uh, William Shank in St. Louis, who, who I I think it was William who wrote me and was like, Hey man, I think it's amazing that you take the time to actually talk to your fans. And I didn't answer the email for like four months. And then when I wrote him, I go, this is a fucking terrible look, man. You reached out and said a nice thing. And I, I fucking did. I think I'm hoping that's William. Jesus Christ. I hope funny would be if I chili did that shit. Uh, so I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he continued to listen and he reached out and he felt that way. I'm, I'm happy for, I'm, you know, I'm thankful for Heath who sent me the gift of Pearl Jam from Wrigley Field. Thank you so much, Heath, for thinking of me. I'm thankful you're in my life. Uh, I'm thankful for Will, who sends me corrections all the time with his mustache lurking and his fucking 1860s baseball uniform and burlap. And he, he plays in an old-timey baseball league. And I was like, what, do you got a fucking weird mustache too? And then he put up a picture. Yes, of course I do. Well, of course he does. Uh, I, I, now, I don't know if that's a McLeod and uh, Mercury mustache situation. And Will's not an M, so, so he can't get involved in the battle. Maybe he'll take on the winner. Who knows? Uh, I thankful to Steve G who wrote me and he's like, Hey man, what's the seven 11 uh, uh, story? Because I want to play it for some friends. And then he wrote me back. He's like, you got two new listeners, man. They love the fucking story. And I mean, they, and they are going to listen to this one and go, why the fuck are you listening? Why are you, this guy's just thanking people? What the hell? This is literally, this is nothing but podcast romper room. Tell that guy to put down the fucking mirror. I see fucking Steve G and Heath and Billy Shank and fucking Hugh in England and Willie G. Uh, and of course our friend Sue Cloutier, who, who's amazing. And, uh, and I've seen, an amazing transformation in her. She was someone who had her own podcast and then she became a runner and she had a running podcast. She's involved me in her show. I've been on her show uh, a million years ago, but thank you. Uh, our buddy Ty, 
Uh, I don't know if he. Want, I don't know if people want me to say their last name. Sp- Ty Springall. I, I, he, but again, he's got another name too. I don't know. It's fucking social media. Who knows what names? My own brother goes by a different name. I got no fucking idea. Um, Megan Sweet, of course, who is a, a huge supporter of this show and has sent things in the past. Thank you. I'm grateful for you. I'm thankful that you're in the show. Uh, I'm thankful for Tommy Packner, who sends me all sorts of Snapchats with his big fiddle and uh, stuff when he's eating at Portillo's. He's my man on the ground in Wisconsin right now, or one of them anyway. I'm, I'm thankful for Anthony Dunker, who was my man in Australia, but now is in New York. He's he's coming closer. He's on his way to California. Eventually, he'll just write me and be like, hey, I'm outside at the buzzer. I'll let him in and we'll talk all sorts of Australia. That'll be fun. Um... Patrick, uh, you know, Patrick G. I get, I don't know if people want their last name. Alan C. Conant. I'll say that. Why not? Uh, our buddy Jake Iverson is out there lurking. Our friend, our friend Dylan Sumter. Thank you. This show again, this show belongs to you. Thankful. Uh, I'm thankful for all of you. I'm thankful for Mark Mascalino who, who jumped on board and then came to see me in Cincinnati. Uh, I I'm, I'm thankful for, uh, for, I, you know, I'm going to say dry. It could be Dree. Uh, I don't know. She's in Brazil. And whenever she has her birthday, I get to wish her happy birthday in Portuguese. Uh, drill, uh, uh, Dree, I apologize. Dree could be just dry or Dree. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm ruining everything now by saying terrible things. Uh, our buddy, Jeff P again, a name. I don't want to, I don't want to say person's name, but if you, if you're out there, if you're a Jeff P take this and run with it, Chris Woods, I'm not going to fucking abbreviate your name. I've said it on here before <laughs> our friend, Virginia, uh, Schwarten. Why not? I'll just say her name. Uh, Tony Morrison, Toby Wallwork. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for you. Uh, I'm thankful for Ron and Laura Boyd. I'm thankful for Erica Elliott, who, uh, was such a super fan of this show and was, was driving me to and from, she would come to the fucking 2020 all the time. She'd take me to and from the airport. And I'm, I'm grateful for her and her sons, you know, and for her nephew, Christian and, uh, all of them. They, they, I'm thankful that they are in my life and, and I'm, I'm grateful that they decided to stay in my life. They, they, you know, they're friends. It makes me happy. Uh, Michelle, uh, Becker. I, I don't want to say her name. Fuck. She used to have a different name. I, I would say her, uh, should I still say, I won't say her fake name because what if she gets in trouble? I don't it's like, I don't know. Everybody has names. Uh, Cindy Coy who uh, constantly keeps me entertained on Facebook with dirty stories about her chiropractor. Yeah, that happens uh, on her page. She'll write like uh like erotic fiction about her chiropractor and the electricity and his fingertips as he touches her lower back. And Oh, oh and try not to jerk off on Facebook when you read that kind of stuff, boy. Hi, Cindy. I just embarrassed you, but that's fine. Um, but I'm, I'm glad you're, I'm gl- you know what? I'm thankful for Michael Yoder. In addition to being thankful for Cindy Coy, I'm thankful for Michelle. I'm thankful for uh, our buddy, Kevin, uh, Kevin D you know who you are. Uh, Kevin Davis. I'll just say it. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm thankful for Michael Yoder who, uh, when he was in uh, Wisconsin, he had a venue and he worked hard to get me into it. The two shows I wound up doing at his place were fucking fantastic. Uh, I loved it because, again, I, I was coming to Wisconsin for a real reason. Then I was when I was seeing Jill and to, to have a venue that would let me do a show there um, while I was staying at Jill's place was fantastic. So the two shows I did and it wasn't really Green Bay. I forget. It was like Algonquin fucking Wisconsin. I don't know. It was just outside of Green Bay. But uh, but Michael Yoder stepped up and then he wound up moving to Illinois. And now I think he lives somewhere else, but whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that Michael Yoder's in my life and that he's done, done nice things to reach out. I'm thankful for Robert Chaz and Terry James, uh, who also have last names, but I don't want to say their last names just again. I've said, well, I've said Terry James, Lacaz and Robert Chaz shoot. Why am I going to, I want Juan Nieto. I'm just going to say everybody's names. I'm thankful for Alfonso Gill. Alfonso Gill was a super fan. It might still be. He was a super fan of this show for the longest time. He came to see me live in 2020, I, I, 2020, 20. I gave him a ride home a couple of times. Cause he was a guy who would, you know, he was working hard, working in a kitchen. He would take the bus to come see me. And I just was like, nah, man, I'll give you a fucking ride home. You're the coolest. Cause he always said amazing things and he would support and, he, and he's thanked on the CD as well, but he would send money. And I'm like, dude, you're taking the bus, save your money, get a car, do whatever you can for yourself. And he's like, I want to support. You need to know that, that I love the show and I, and you need to know how much you mean to me. Well, Alfonso, you mean just as much to me, and I hope you're, uh, I haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, you might not listen any longer, but but know that I'm thankful for all of your friendship and support over the years, and I hope you're safe, and I hope whatever you're doing, you're happy. Uh, our friend Jerome uh, from getthebutters.com, that's, uh, he's, you know, Jerome Nichols, he's the coolest, he's in Michigan. So go to getthebutters.com, you know, it is holiday season. I'm sure he's running some sort of Black Friday thing this weekend, maybe, but if he's not, he's got to have some sort of Christmas deal. And even if he's not, these things are worth buying at full price because they're good products. So go to getthebutters.com and check out our friend Jerome and all of the hound, uh, house, say housemade, handmade products that he has. Uh, and that he wants to advance to you. So go ahead and check out our buddy. He's, uh, I'm thankful for him. I'm glad he was in my life uh, or is, uh, I'm thankful for Melanie Bilbrey, 
who came to see my show in uh, Atlanta and now lives in the Bay Area and has also entertained me on Snapchat with shots of her cat and everything else that she has going on up there. Uh, thankful to Seth and Brandy. You know why. I mean, they're, they're a named tier on Patreon. I mean, they, they showed me my worth to a certain extent. I mean, they, they reached out and, and uh, you know, Seth wanted me, Brandy got me, and I went and spent an, a magical time in New York with the two of them. And now Seth is still around. I don't know if he listens, but he lurks. And he's written me on Twitter and he's written on Facebook sometimes. And Brandy, I don't know what Brandy's doing, but uh, but they need to know that I'm thankful for them showing me that uh, that I had worth at a time when maybe I didn't think I did or at a time when I was taking it for granted. They reached out in a way that I, I was still, to this day, waylays me. Uh, I want to say, you know, I'm thankful for Philip Chaffin, uh, who has a new album out. Actually, if you want to check it, I think he's doing standards or something like that. I saw him advertised on Facebook, uh, but Philip is great. And I'm glad that he is, uh, that he's doing all of these cool ass things on Facebook and, and for his life. And, and, uh, so check him out. He's got a Christmas, uh, it's a Christmas purchase by Philip Chaffin's album. Why not? He's the best. I'm thankful for him. Uh, you know, I'm thankful for Sean English and Patrick Solomon. Why? Well, just because they're great, but also they are new Patreon people. As a matter of fact, folks, Sean English and Patrick Solomon have signed up for Patreon. Thank you both. I'm thankful that you will sign up. Sean English used to support me via just the donation link. Like he did that. He clicked on that and he had a, a recurring payment that was amazing. And I couldn't believe that he was doing it, but, uh, but then he, he contacted me and he's like, Hey man, maybe I should switch over to Patreon. And I said, and anytime you want to, that's fantastic. But thank you. I, I if you want to stop, whatever you got to do. But within a couple of days, Sean had signed up on Patreon. So Sean English and Patrick Solomon, thank you so much for signing up for Patreon. Uh, you're the newest, but not the latest or not the last. I should say, no, you're the latest. If you're the newest, you're also the latest. Good Christ. Just fucking shoot me. This fucking st- the show with a lot of thank you nonsense. Uh, I'm thankful to Ann Zill who is uh, uh, always very nice to me on, on social media. She and I just, there was some great pictures of her and her, uh, I think it's her boyfriend. I don't think it's her husband, but they were just in Vegas and had a fantastic vacation, but she showed up at a live stream a couple of weeks ago. She's reached out on social media and I, I, I'm, I'm thankful for her. Uh, I'm thankful for Renee D'Ambrosio. Uh, I, I don't want to, I hope I'm saying these things right. I'm thankful for Les Gephardt. Uh, again, this show belongs to you. Les is over in Europe as well. He's also, you know what? That's more of my European contingent. He's on the ground. I've now got at least nine people who will watch me over there. Uh, Michelle St. Louis, who is also part of the Canadian contingent, though I've not been able lucky enough to meet her just yet. Um, but she's always been very nice and gracious and said very good things to me and been very supportive and very cool. And I'm thankful that she's uh, part of the show and, and part of enjoying it. And it makes me happy. Uh, Matthew L. I'm not even going to attempt your last name. Matthew Liefenbach, I think it is. Uh, Jeff and Hillary Thomas, I, I thank you and I'm grateful for you and thankful to have you here. Gregory Thomas, let's, as long as we're going with Thomas's, let's go with Gregory T. I'm glad that, uh, that, uh, he is involved and thank you so much. He's always been, he, he's active on the, on the Joker's page and he'll write me a case. Like he's one of those guys where I won't hear from him and all of a sudden, like he'll write something after a month, he'll write how funny I am or something. And it makes me very happy. Gregory, thank you. Uh, Thomas Tate. Uh, another OG, Stacy Hood. These are guys who've been around from the beginning. Uh, I thank you guys. I'm thankful for you, and I'm thankful that you listen to the show and you still participate. And because again, man, 11 years is a long time, and and to do anything for 11 years, for fuck's sake. I mean, let's put it this way: if I was a kid, if I was your kid, I'd be 11 years old right now. You'd you'd have to put me. What am I? I'd be in sixth grade. You'd have to buy me sandwiches and shit. I mean, dude, you really want that? I, instead, look at me. I'm the hassle-free 11 year old. I'm, I'm I don't even bother you. I step off to the side. Uh, Aya. Our friend A.A. Cassander, I, I, I thank you for being involved. I'm thankful for you in my life. Charlie, I'm thankful for you. Uh, we've interacted on Twitter. Uh, he has a different name on Twitter, but he tells me his name is Charlie, so I'll believe it. Angelo Fiorentino, who has always been unbelievably nice to me and reached out to tell me that whenever, if, as long as I'm doing a show, he will listen. He's always said it. If, if you're talking, I'm listening forever. Uh, so that's how it's going to be, man. I'm, I, I know I have at least one fan banked for the rest of my life. Uh, and that's Angelo Fiorentino. Now, do I also think Manny Garcia? Do I also think these other people are all going to be involved? Do I think Sean Pinder is going to be involved as he writes me from Australia and tries to terrify me with stories of spiders? Perhaps. But I'm thankful even for the Australian spider stories because I was planning to come there and do some shows, and now I know I should not because there are spiders there that want to fucking murder me. Uh, (laughs) Thank you, Sean. Uh, But thank you, Angelo Fiorentino. Because every time you write me on Twitter, every time you reach out and tell me, hey, man, uh, the show means a lot to me and I will always be listening, uh, I believe you. And it makes me happy because I don't even believe myself sometimes. And I'm like, you're good. You can do this, whatever. And uh, you know me, man. I get get in my own fucking way. So to always have an Angelo reach out, uh, that makes me really happy. 
uh, Chris and uh, well, uh, Scotty Gerwitz. I want to say that, and Chris M. I don't want. I don't want to say your last name again. I never know if people want their last name said. Uh, but thank you. I, I'm I'm grateful that you listen. I'm grateful that you in, involve yourselves and you reach out to me, Jesse and Andrea Alora. I'm thankful for you in my lives. Again, also OG people like with Stacy and Thomas and and A. I've been around since the beginning. Amanda Howlett. Uh, I, 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 you went through, uh, you know, some tough times last year and you reached out to me on Snapchat and we talked a little about it and, um, and, uh, and I'm, I'm glad to see you via social media, uh, being happy and engaging in things that make you, uh, happy, whether it's your Tim's, uh, coffee at the desk or, uh, or your fancy cups, all of that neat stuff, all your, your bowling league. I'm, I'm proud of you and I'm happy for you, Amanda. I'm thankful to have you in my life. Uh, and I, did I, I said, Andrea and Jesse, Alora, right. I, I don't want to pay them short shrift. I mean, the two of them have been, like I said, around for a very long time. Jesse also reacts. He, he writes me, he wanted to get involved with the Joker's page. You know, he's a big dude like me and, and you, you just wind up running into that wall. So it's nice to have somebody reach out and go, Hey man, I, I got the same things. I'm going through the same stuff. And, uh, and, and so it's, it's nice to know that Jesse's out there and, and, uh, you know, he's here if I need him and I'm here if he needs me. Uh, I'm thankful for Brian Kilmurray. Who, who is always commenting on Facebook and staying engaged and listens to the show. And also he will also quote a, a bit, which makes me happy. Anybody who quotes bits makes me happy. Uh, I'm happy for Francesca Crofts in Denver, who's always out at her fucking raves and stuff and, and, and supports the show and is really nice. Thank you, Francesca. Uh, I'm happy for, oh, and I want to thank another Angelo, our buddy, Angelo uh, Alvarado, I believe it is. Uh, thank you, Angelo for supporting the show. Again, this show belongs to you and all of your engagement. Even if I don't reply soon enough, even though I'm not that guy, I, I please know that you are, uh, close and in my heart. And, and I'm very happy and proud to have all of you engaged. Cause again, this show does belong to you. It belongs to Adriana DeRuz who, uh, who had a, who was part of the Kickstarter and got a song out named after her. And, and now is part of the little Schmitty's fit brigade. She just ran like a fucking five K or a 10 K or something. And it was so funny. She's like, yeah, I'm disappointed. I didn't make my time. And I was so happy because everybody came in and be like, fuck that man. Add a girl. Good job. Add a boy. Way to go. Fucking you did it. That's all that matters. You finished good for you. Cause you can shave that time off. Just fucking doing it, showing up, putting the shoes on, getting to the fucking starting line and going. That's the hard part. Then when you finish, you can go, well, you know, I had goals, but I got more goals for next time. And I'm proud of you, Adriana. Good for you. Thankful that you're in my life. MJ always showing up with a fuck. Yeah. On social media. Thank you, MJ. Uh, I don't know when you get the time since you're always on the beach taking photographs. I don't know. I, I don't know how you live your life when <laughs> every time I see you, you're taking photos of what I assume is your son in the surf. I hope it's not. Otherwise, you're going to get a restraining order against you. But still, uh, I should say, I hope it's your son, because if it's not, you're going to get a restraining order. But I will say, but you, you always show up at the fuck. Yeah. And it makes me happy on social media. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Lacey. Artemis, thank you for engaging and, and, and reaching out. You just, I didn't get to reply to you. You wrote on the Facebook page, uh, you've, you've, uh, we've engaged back and forth a few times, but on the, on the Joker's page, you wrote something about coming to Canada and, uh, and I didn't get to respond, but I will. It's not, I'm not, this is not me lazily brushing it off Lacey, but thank you for reaching out. And I will definitely, uh, reach back and, and, and say what I needed to say about what you said, because it was interesting. And what you said, I appreciated it very much. Um, so you're in the Canadian crew. I, I'm going to throw you in there with fucking well banks and everybody else and Ken and John and fucking Mike and Tanya and all those people. It's fantastic. Uh, Louis Vacuna. Another OG who's been around for a long time. Thank you, Louis. I appreciate all of your support and all of your help. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for Gerents who I'm not even going to say his last name because if you don't know you're a Gerence, then I don't fucking know who you are. I'm thankful for John W. I'm thankful for Nicholas C. Uh, I'm skipping last name. I'm thankful for Diana C or Diane C, queen of the little monsters. She knows who she is, but I'm thankful because she reaches out. She's another one who will reach out with a pep talk and tell me, man, you should be doing this. You should be, you're funny and I'm happy and it makes me happy to listen. And, and so thank you, Diane. You know how that helps. Brad W, Brad Weddle, who, uh, who is, who's, just fucking great and, and reached out and he came to Cincinnati and we met him there and then he became a Patreon person. And I mean, it it was, it was so great. And I'm thankful that he again showed up in Cincinnati and then was also able to reach out and become part of the show uh, and part of the Patreon beat. Uh, Jason B that's our friend, Jason Baldwin. He knows I love him. I'll say his last name. What the fuck? Why not? Jason B. You know what? I'll tell you this. He's throwing me off because he's always cooking good stuff. Like on, on, I'll see his stuff on Facebook and he's like, oh, I made a lobster gumbo pot with cornbread. And I'm like, you fucking jag off. Did I just mention that I have to eat fucking ground turkey? You bastard. Um, but I aspire to be a Jason Baldwin, somebody who cooks for themselves, somebody who takes care of themselves. And, uh, and so it inspires me to see that Jason's doing that. I'm thankful for that. Uh, Jeremy Herbal. Uh, he's, 
he came to Seattle. You know, he he wound up on the Never Not Funny auction. He won the baseball game with me and Jimmy Pardo. We have not been able to fill that yet because he's in Seattle and we're down here. Hopefully this coming season we'll be able to. Um, and fuck, I might just go up and go to a game with him anyway. It won't even count for the auction because Jeremy's just fantastic. He came to the shows in Seattle. Uh, he met me at the meet and greet. Then we went out and ate. It was me and him and, and Brent and Megan wound up going. Um, and who else came? I thought when we had one other person. I apologize. I, I'm so bad at this, but I think we had, it was me and Jeremy, Brent and Megan. And, and I believe we had, I know I, Chief was with me one night. God, I'm an idiot. I apologize. If, who, whoever else was at the Seattle dinner table. Uh, thank you. And I, I'm, I'm glad you were there. And I, I can't believe I've forgotten this. Uh, it was somebody who split poutine with me. Who the fuck was it? We split poutine. God, I'm, uh, see, this is the old me. I hate old me. Uh, but I love our friend, Jeremy Herbal, who then, uh, he comes to the live streams. He's also very gracious. He's become a Patreon person. He supports, uh, he, you know, and he's, and he's rooting for the bears because his, he knows his Seahawks are terrible. Ha <laughs> ha. Probably not, but that's still, uh, I'll just go ahead and throw that out there, but I'm thankful for Jeremy. Uh, I'm thankful for Greg Hazard who always reaches out to me and, and, and tells me good things on Twitter. And, and he, he's another one who said, Hey man, uh, this is, you know what Greg said to me? And I don't know if I've said this on the air yet. And I screenshotted this and I kept it. He said, you remember how America used to stop on Thursday night to watch Seinfeld? That's what your show has been for me since it's been on the air. And, uh, and I mean, that's dude, that, that, that hits you right in the throat, hits you in the gut, hits you in the balls because it's, that's all you can aspire to is to have people who enjoy what you do and they stay with you while you do it, whether you're doing it poorly or you're doing it well. Uh, just to know that Greg has had me be a part of his life since I've, you know, he's, he's, he's made me part of his life for the, the full amount of time I've been on the air. And, and it's, it's, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for Greg. I'm thankful for him telling me too, because then, then it really makes you go, it puts it in, in sharp focus. Uh, when you can doubt yourself and you realize that you might mean something, you know, that's kind of cool. And so please know that you, Greg, you mean something to me because again, if, if you're not listening, I'm not talking, it's just me talking to, uh, you know, <laughs> to Angelo Fiorentino, who's the last dude to ever listen. He, he's going to want to, he's the one to shut out the lights when everyone else is gone. It'll just be me talking to Angelo. He'll hear the gunshot and then he'll turn off the lights and clean it up. Uh, thank you to Larry Larson who's my friend from high school who actually listens to my podcast and enjoys it and texts me to tell me so. Cause it's that thing where, I mean, none of my friends listen, you know, Max listens and, uh, and, and that's great, you know, and, and but I mean, my other, my other friends, Oh, Jimmy O listens. I apologize. I take that back. Jimmy O from the UN of evil also listens and Larson listens, which is fucking crazy. I mean, I, cause let's put it this way. Jimmy O and David are in my inner circle. So I would kind of, for them to listen is great, but I almost, it's almost expected a little bit sometimes, but fucking Larry, I mean, hey, that guy, I hadn't seen him in years. And all of a sudden he's just fucking listening to the show and write me with comments. We used to go to wrestling together all the time. And I see pictures of his beautiful family. He texts me stuff all the time. And I, I, so, so I'm proud that Larry's that listening and I'm thankful to have him still in my life after fucking, you know, 30 years or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, I'm thankful to Jeff R. I don't want to say Jeff's name, but Jeff knows who he is. Um, Thankful that he's part of my life. Wayne Pichu, Pichu, uh, who I met in Seattle, and I'm grateful that he's uh, around. I'm thankful to have him as part of my life. I'm thankful to have him enjoy the show. I'm thankful that I was able to show him the live version of the 7-Eleven story and have him enjoy it. That made me very happy. Uh, and I, I met him and his wife, and, and we didn't get to hang out, but we will the next time I'm in Seattle for sure, absolutely. And he told me about a fucking Cuban sandwich place that we're going to take down next time I'm in town. It's going to be great. Uh, I'm thankful to Tim Ratke. Tim is a guy who has been on this show from the beginning. He's listened forever. And he and I don't always see eye to eye about stuff that's going on. And, and, uh, and he's, you know, I will tell you, when I do shows and I say, well, look, I'm, I know that there are people out there who won't agree with this or who won't like this. Uh, Tim's one of the guys I have in mind. Lou is another guy I have in mind. I mean, I, I, Zach was a guy I had in mind. These were not Zach Landis, but a different Zach. These are guys who I know disagree with me politically or disagree with, with things I think or, or feel, you know, and, uh, and yet they have not left. They've stayed. Well, Zach left, (laughs) but, but Lou and, and, uh, and Tim and, and other people who disagree with me aren't afraid to tell me they disagree but they're able to separate me and the show and the entertainment aspect and who I am as a guy from that. Cause I, I, I think they understand I'm not brow beating them. I'm not talking specifically about them. I talk in absolutes. I talk in generalities on this show. Uh, and I talk in circles. We all know this, but, but, but Tim and I just had an exchange via messenger where he's like, uh, 
you know, he, he was, I could tell he was a little miffed. And so I wrote him back and I go, look, man, I'm not, you know, I wasn't trying to do this. And then he wrote me and he, you know, he explained how he feels and what he believes. And I totally get it. I mean, I, and I agree with him. I mean, he, he and I have a lot more in common than we think. It's just that, uh, you know, I tend to fire from the hip a whole lot and I, and a lot of people get hit by the shrapnel and I think he caught some that week, but he reached out and, uh, and, and I was very happy that we were able to talk and get it sussed because he's a good man who's been around forever, came to see me in Chicago. And I'm thankful to have Tim Radke as a listener and a guy in my life. Uh, and I'm thankful for Lou and everybody else. I'm thankful for people who agree with me. I'm thankful for people who disagree. I'm thankful for people who can understand the difference between a show and, uh, and, and being upbraided or berated or whatever. I mean, it's just, and that's bullshit, but this show is me. I mean, I can't lie. I can't separate myself from it. I can't go down that fucking alley. I am who I am. And I say the things that are true that I, that I believe, but I'm happy that you guys are able to still be friends with me and look past it. If we have disagreements, I'm grateful for that. And I want to thank Gail. Gail, who uh, I met when I was doing stand up on the road and, and I worked uh, at her radio station and then she started to listen to Never Not Funny, I believe. And then she followed me to 40 year old boy and she's been gracious enough to reach out to me all the time. And, and uh, I'm constantly seeing her on social media with her updates regarding the the cat next door who winds up in a fight and then comes over to her house because her hillbilly neighbors won't fucking take care of it. She's got beautiful pets. She's she and I share an affinity for Rick Springfield that that will I, look and I don't care if the rest of you. I'll tell you this right now. I don't give a fuck if the rest of you hate him. Uh, I will always be able to reach out and have Gail p- take my hand and the two of us will go see Rick, whether he's 80 or 90 or a thousand years old. If he's still playing, we're still going. It's, you know what? Rick Springfield is to uh, me and Gail as I am to Angelo Fiorentino. As long as he's singing, the two of us are going to show up and watch him. And, uh, and it makes me, it makes me thankful that somebody who knew me before I became who I am now, I mean, when I was doing stand up, I was totally different. You know, I was working topical. I was still funny and quick, but, uh, but I, I wasn't as, uh, forthcoming with who I was as a person. I hit a lot of who I was and, and for Gail to, to, to like me in that incarnation, and then come along and stick with me through never not funny. And even now, and, and still be my friend as, as well as a, a listener who enjoys what I do. I mean, you can't be more thankful for something like that. You know, you can't, you can't be happier than to have somebody who's, who's seen you go through all the changes you've gone through in your life and stayed and still enjoys your company. So thank you, Gail. I'm thankful to have you in my life. And I'm thankful to everybody who's ever listened. I'm thankful to everybody who's ever laughed. I'm thankful to everybody who still lets me into their lives every Thursday slash Friday, depending on if I can get out my fucking skull. And, uh, and I'm, I, you know who I'm most thankful for? I'm most thankful to anybody who feels slighted right now, because I know you're going to forgive me because you know, I did my best. <laughs> I, I, I know that I'm woeful. There are people I've forgotten to mention. There are people who are important to me that I've forgotten to mention. And I, and I, uh, I don't, I don't mean to slight you and I don't want you to think any less of me. And I certainly don't want you to think any less of yourselves and what you mean to me, because anybody who's hearing these words, anybody who's heard my words in the past or anybody who's going to stick around and hear my words in the future, you mean everything to me. Uh, because you've allowed me to do this for, um, going on, you know, 30 years in comedy, uh, 28 years in comedy and, uh, and, and basically 12 in podcasting and, and you still care about what I have to say. And that's the greatest gift you could ever receive. Like I've always said, the greatest gift you can ever receive. The biggest privilege you can have in your life is to be paid to be yourself. And, uh, And you allow that to happen, whether you're Patreon subscribers like Sean English and Patrick Solomon and other people I've mentioned within the context of this show, whether you've ever bought merchandise, whether you've ever donated via PayPal, whether you watch the live stream and you send me curly money from Ireland. uh, I'm thankful to each and every one of you who have ever supported me with a laugh, a listen or a dollar. And I want you to know that it does not go unnoticed. It does not go unappreciated. And while I can climb down my own fucking throat half the time and climb into my skull and, and, and keep myself busy with wondering why I haven't done the things I'm supposed to do, please know that there's always space for me to be grateful and thankful that you've allowed me to do all of the amazing things that I've been able to do. I love you guys. Happy Thanksgiving.
You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can find me at Instagram and Snapchat. I'm Mike 40 YOB. That's Mike 40 YOB. Find me there, please, and send me cool stuff from your country like Stephen Mudd does. Uh, you know, I'll throw this in the plugs now. I'm, I'm at Twitch, twitch.com. I'm, it's the channel, The 40 Year Old Boy. I don't know if caps count, but it's all lowercase and it's the number 40. The 40 Year Old Boy channel exists on Twitch. Go and subscribe, please, because that's coming a lot faster than you think it is. I'll tell you a little bit more about that next week. Um, I, I, ideally I was hoping to be up. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll, we'll talk about it next week. Uh, but, but right now, our, you know, what our friend Jason Baldwin, who I just mentioned, he actually started to follow me on Twitch, but go follow me on Twitch, man. Cause I'll be on there, uh, doing all sorts of different fun, cool stuff that I have planned. And, uh, and I hope you'll come with me as you've indulged me here. Audio wise for the last 12 years, I hope you'll do so visually, visually. I couldn't even spit it out. Uh, so go to the Twitch channel, the 40 year old boy and follow that subscribe, do whatever you got to do. Also, please remember I've got a YouTube channel, the 40 year old boy, YouTube channel with live streams. Live streams are available, including one next week. That's right. We're doing a live stream next week and that'll be, uh, the 29th, I believe November 29th. I'll be doing a live stream on YouTube to tell you guys all about whatever the fuck at six o'clock PM uh, Pacific time. As you know, that's the best time to do a stream six o'clock PM Pacific time, four o'clock PM in Hawaii, seven o'clock in Denver, nine o'clock in New York, eight o'clock PM in Chicago. And then uh, as, as always mentioned in all of the territories outside of the continental U S and Canada, please figure it out on your own. Cause I got no fucking clue how your clocks work, but November 29th, there will be a live stream. Check it out. I'll be excited to do so. And while you're there or before then, even go to the 40 year old boy, YouTube channel and subscribe. And while we're talking about that, let's do this. I actually did a live stream over the weekend. I should tell you that because again, like I said, the European contingent showed up because it was really late at night. It was almost one in the morning. I think when we started, uh, I was testing stuff. I was testing cameras. I was learning how to do audio stuff with geo. And then he's like, Hey man, could you do a live stream while I'm out walking the dogs? Like just so I'm not bored. I said, yeah, I can do that. Cause apparently he doesn't want to just talk to me on the phone. He wants me to talk over the fucking YouTube and then he doesn't have to talk back. He just wanted to, that's what he wanted to do. Hey man, I don't want to talk back to you, buddy. All right, good. I get it. Um, However, you can find him, uh, or you can't find him. What are we, we're not looking for him. You're looking for me at the 40 year old boy, YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe to that. And there was a live stream last week that you can check out now. Uh, I'm, I'm there and I'm funny and I talked for a couple of hours and, uh, is it good? I don't know, but I mean, it was me talking and we, we were able to test the green screen, which still has some kinks and some things we got to work out on it, but, uh, but it exists. It's out there and you'll see there was a fancy background we had, and we're going to have more fancy backgrounds going forward. Oh my God, folks, look at me coming into the 20th century and just in time for the 21st century. (laughs) Uh, I got green screen technology. Oh, brace yourselves. Uh, So go check out that live stream if you want. It's a lot of me talking. And it was funny. Gio's like, dude, this is like an episode of the podcast. And it kind of is, you know, I go off on tangents. I talk about some stuff, but we talked a little about the California fires. So I'll tell you what, if that doesn't make you want to go ahead and tune in, I don't know what would. Oh, Christ. Don't you want to hear me pontificate about the goddamn fires? Um, Go check out the podcast again, or the, uh, the, the, the live stream from Saturday. It's, uh, it's really, it is. It's like an episode of the podcast. So this was a thank you podcast. If you want content podcast, that was from the live stream on Saturday. So go ahead and check that out, but subscribe to the YouTube channel, 40 year old boy, YouTube channel, subscribe to the Twitch channel, the 40 year old boy. And, uh, and I'm there, man. I, I can't wait. I can't wait for you guys to look at me while I'm talking in addition to listening to me. Uh, art by dmh.com of course is david hernandez's website he does all the artwork and all of the music for this show you should check it out and if you want to do any holiday stuff well first of all become his friend uh be his friend at facebook.com slash david mex hernandez you can find him there and uh and while you're there you can also go over to art by dmh.com while you're on the internet that is and check out his website because he's got all sorts of art cool stuff for uh well he you know I'd say for sale, but he's pretty much sold out of the stuff he's already done. You want to contact him via Facebook if you want him to do anything custom for you. And you do trust me, Uh, you know, go to his website and see the work he's done in the past to get an idea of what he can do for you in the future. And you can contact him via Facebook at facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. He works in oil paints. He works in watercolors. He needs a lot of lead time because stuff has to dry. I mean, I don't know a lot about art, but I know what he's told me. So 
And also, if you want to get it by the time Christmas comes around, you know, you've got a month now, so you got to stop fucking around. You got to go ahead and contact David because he's going to get backed up and eventually he might have to say no to some people. So if you want some artwork from David for Christmas, you need to contact him at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. And you need to go to his website, artbydmh.com to look at the stuff that he does. That's A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H dot com. <laughs> They look like a bunch of dicks Checking out the buffalo And we're scoping out our chicks Pilgrims in America I'm a Native American This is where I was born can't stay we don't want country music we don't want subway i'm a native american pilgrims in america pilgrims want to stay Pilgrims want to own all the land Pilgrims go to Starbucks Pilgrims eat at taco stands Pilgrims in America I'm a Native American This is where I was born I'm afraid of your Bible Selfie sticks, pilgrims like genocide. Pilgrims like Kardashians, pilgrims like Astroglide. Pilgrims in America. Pilgrims in America. I'm a Native American. This is where I was born. I'm afraid of your body. If you can't tell your friend you love him, if you can't ask your girlfriend to prom, uh, if you got to tell your garbage man to quit leaving your fucking cans with the lids on the ground, hire me for Cameo. I can do that kind of thing. So go to the Cameo app, download it on your phone, find me and book me. Why not? 
Who wants to be an Uber driver? Who wants to be a Lyft driver? It's it's you, isn't it? Use my codes, Uber, D-J-Z-W-1-Y-T-T-U-E. For Lyft, it's Mike720057. I uh, use those whether you're driving or riding for the first time, and I get a spiff, man. I can be your Uber pimp. Whether you're riding or driving, I get a taste of the gig, like Steve Lawrence in, uh, in Lake Wazapamani, and I'm excited to do so. Uh, and also, please remember to go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com. Check it out. We've got the uh, Joe Business page with the Amazon link, and that's really important for Black Friday, although I'm, I'm sure you're going to hear this, or Cyber Monday, which is also coming up. If you hear this before then, if you're, uh, you know, we get money, they get money, you get stuff. It doesn't cost you anything extra to use my link. If you're going to order stuff via Amazon, why not use my link? I demand to ask. Why? Why? I demand answers. Uh, <laughs> go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com. Go to the Joe Business page. There's an Amazon link right there. Click on it and do all of your shopping. Then you're in Amazon. It's that, it's that simple. It costs you nothing extra except five seconds. And then everything you buy, we get a, it, it supports the show. Thank you for thinking of us. Uh, well, you're only thinking because I shouted at you. Well, that's fine. You're still thinking of me. That's the important thing. So please get out there and, and work it and make it work and go ahead and buy stuff for Christmas and buy gifts and all sorts of neat ass stuff. And we get a taste. If you use the Amazon link right there on the Joe business page on Mike Schmidt comedy.com, we get money, they get money, you get stuff. Uh, it's what we want. It's what you need. It's what your friends need. What's your family? needs. It's what your neighbors need. It's what, you know, it's what you need. It's what you need. It's what you need. It's what Michael Hutchins needs. No, it's, it's, it's not, it's clearly not what Michael Hutchins needs. I hear, I will tell you this. If you go to the Amazon link and you're going to buy a Christmas gift from Michael Hutchins, do not get him a belt. I can tell you very confidently. He definitely has one. Okay. He, and he does not need another. He will never need another belt. He enjoys the one he has maybe a little too much. Some would say, but I can tell you that Michael Hutchins is very attached to that belt. So if you're thinking about it and you're going to go use the Amazon link to buy him a gift. Yeah. I would leave belt off of your list. Although, you know what? You can put it on his naughty list. You can put Michael Hutchins on your naughty list. Come to a throne if you're not gonna suck a dick. Egg, egg, egg.